And welcome to the anniversary edition of Understanding Photography with Kim Ayres. I've actually lasted a whole year doing this, um, which feels kind of strange. It's, it's great that you're here. You're here to celebrate it. Um, I can already see that there's a few people kind of coming in um, saying hello. Uh, so, yep, we're here live on Facebook. Let me know you're here. Leave a comment. If this is one of your first times here, then let me know where you're from as well. It's always good to know where in the world people are tuning in from. So, yes, I, the anniversary edition, I decided I would... Uh, I've asked everybody to send me their best photo. Now, best is a kind of... There's a couple of different variations on how you might define that. I'll talk a little bit about that later. Uh, but let's just take a quick look, see who's in, see what kind of comments we're getting just now. Uh, oh, Vandana says hi. Ben says hello, everyone. Maggie says good evening. Mandy's good evening. Becca is evening, Kim. Happy first anniversary. Uh, Rosie says hello, Kim, everyone. Congratulations on your first anniversary, Kim. Um, Asim goes, happy first birthday, understanding photography with Kim Ayers. <laughs> and lots of little party emojis, let the party photo party begin. Yes, as you can see, I hope you've noticed here that I have gone to the effort here um, to string up some uh, lights and balloons to <laughs> try and create a little bit of a party atmosphere. Um, with thanks to my wife there for actually getting hold of the, uh, the balloons for me now looks like my voice there is a little bit loud I'll just turn that down a little bit uh, otherwise the recording is just gonna keep blowing out I think uh, what else have we got Sandra is in here saying good evening everyone and happy anniversary from snowy Birmingham uh, Jill says evening congratulations thank you Kim uh, Becca's given us lots of balloons and party emojis um, Roy says hi all from a very cold Huddersfield um, oh, Vandana says she's from Wembley. Okay, cool. That's great to know where you're from. Um, uh, VG is saying, good evening, friends. Happy anniversary, Kim. Congratulations. Uh, Michelle is saying, evening, Kim. Congratulations. And Brian is saying, hi, Kim, and all who are watching in. Many thanks for your time, effort, and great talent you've shared with us over the last year. I'm sure you've been a great inspiration to us all. Uh, and I am sure we can look forward to many more great nights together. Well done. Oh, and Jackie's here. Uh, from South Africa too. So, oh, Nicola's here. Yep, evening to Kim and all from a sunny, snowy Scotland. Yeah, according to the weather forecast today, at least on my app on, on the tablet, it was supposed to be just clear skies all day, but we did get a few snow flurries throughout the day. I think it's been a lot worse in other places in Scotland. Um, but uh, yeah, it is cold, a real kind of biting wind coming in from the Arctic at the moment. Um, so yes, broadcasting here from Britain, where we talk about the weather a lot. <laughs> oh, Naria's here saying hello all. Okay, that's great. Um, lovely to see everybody in. That looks like it's still blasting out red. One, two, yep, yeah, okay, I'll put that about there. Hopefully then that should uh, be okay noise-wise or levels. Oh, a couple more. Sophie's in, says good evening. Oh, Sophie's in from Israel. And uh, Russ says congratulations, Kim. What a fantastic achievement. And Jill says it's sunny with snowy intervals in Yorkshire today. Right, okay, cool. So, yeah, one whole year. Pretty amazing. Um, yesterday, I went back to look at episode number one and was quite horrified. <laughs> to see just how absolutely terrified I look in front of the camera. Um, I don't know how obvious it is to anybody else or how obvious it was to anybody else who was watching me for the first time and didn't have anything to compare it to. But um, yeah, that first, that first one, and in fact, the first few, certainly the first five minutes of each um, podcast, I continually messed up the beginning. I think, in fact, even on episode three, I think I actually re-recorded the beginning for, for the YouTube version. Um, scary stuff. I had not done anything like this before. Episode two, I changed quite a few things because of feedback I got. I have to say, my wife, my son in particular as well, uh, gave me huge feedback in those early days. Uh, you know, the first kind of dozen 
episodes really every single time you know a couple of days later we would sort of sit down together and sort of go through and talk about what we felt had worked what hadn't worked and kind of started honing how the podcasts should go I think um, I started them because well we just got into lockdown suddenly I didn't have any business I wasn't sure what to do with myself and with all these things, any business knows that it's supposed to be doing more with its social media. I thought, well, OK, I've got all this knowledge of photography. What am I going to do with it? And I thought, well, why don't I share it? You know, why don't we sort of set up a podcast where I can talk about some of the photo shoots I've done? I can give tips and tricks and advice and give feedback on on ideas, on images put forward. Actually, oddly enough, when I was originally coming up with ideas, um, it was David Young, I think, suggested the idea of doing critique. And my immediate reaction was actually, no, I wouldn't bother doing that because I didn't think anybody actually wanted critique. In my experience, when people ask, can you tell me what you think of my photo? They generally mean, can you tell me how good you think my photo is? They don't actually really want critique. Um, but he was he kind of said, well, no, actually, if you've got people who are really genuinely interested in moving their photography forward, uh, then they are. So I, I and strangely enough, that's now become the key part of a lot of these podcasts. Not tonight, though. We're not doing a critique thing tonight. Tonight is a celebration. Tonight is a celebration of photography. So I've asked you all to send in your best photos. Um, I'm not going to critique them. We're going to share them and we're going to be inspired by each other tonight. We'll get, next week, we'll go back to doing critique. So... Yeah, when I started, again, there was this notion of initially, I'm trying to remember back a year, when we were told that lockdown was happening, there was this idea that it was going to happen for about 12 weeks. So I thought, well, okay, what are we going to do in three months? So I saw a lot of other photographers just go completely silent. And I thought, well, okay, if I can get some kind of online presence going, then it should at least kind of keep me in the, keep my profile raised a bit. And then by the time this is all over, um, people will still know who I am and I can kind of hit the ground running again. However, pretty quickly it became apparent that this wasn't going to be over in three months. But to start with, there was this sense of, right, I'm going to do this for three months and we'll see how it goes. I really didn't think I would be doing this a year later. But it has changed. It has changed a lot. I mean, interestingly, <laughs> the audience has changed. There's not many of you who are watching now who were there back in the sort of first, even in the first three months, really. There's a handful of you. But to begin with, what happened was I invited all my friends to come along and a few turned up and, and that was great and that was fun. Except for the fact that most of my friends aren't friends with me because they're interested in photography. They're friends with me for all sorts of other reasons. My clients aren't interested in photography. They're in, they, they hire me to do photography for them, but they don't have the passion for photography. So actually, the numbers started dropping off quite, quite quickly. And I started to sort of worry a bit that this was never really going to get off the ground. And, you know, I sort of got down to a point... I think three months in where it was pretty much single figures of anybody turning up to watch this. But then slowly more people started coming in and um, word kind of started getting out a bit. And it's been really noticeable, I think, that uh, sort of since late summer, early autumn last year, there's been a kind of much stronger core of people who come back week in, week out. So... Now, I mean, I suppose another thing that's changed as well is you know, those first those first podcasts. I didn't really bother with the comments. I, I would I you know I, people left comments and I might notice them at the end as I was packing up and suddenly go, oh, somebody's left a comment. Um, now, of course, I love your comments. I see a few more have come in. Uh, Robert saying howdy from Texas. Claire is saying happy one year anniversary, Kim. I don't want to say I told you so a whole year. Really, really well done. You are a natural. Uh, that's lovely. Um, Diana saying hello from snowy Wales and Jim is Jim from Dumfries uh, from the Abbey Camera Club saying thanks for the last 12 months that's lovely that's that's you know it's, I, I getting this feedback and knowing that some of you have been around for three months six months nine months and a small tiny handful of you have been around for the whole year um, 
I really love doing these podcasts and it's it's been a sanity saver for me. I am I'm a people person. That's why I do portrait photography. And I found lockdown particularly difficult. And while everybody else has, you know, people have been talking about second lockdown, third lockdown, this is still the first lockdown for me. Um, my daughter, Meg, is in a very high risk group. And so we've not been taking any chances. And when restrictions have been eased, we haven't really taken advantage of them. I've done a few outdoor shoots, but I've always kept social distancing. Uh, we've been very, very careful. Not being able to really go out, not being able to meet up with people. I've, there have been times when I found it extraordinarily difficult. But having these podcasts and having these, this point in the week where we do communicate. I chat about things, you comment, um, join in, send me stuff for feedback. Uh, it's wonderful. It really is. It is, like I say, an absolute sanity saver for me. Um, so... It's, it's one of those things that, although it sort of started off as a temporary idea, I don't want to let this go now. You know, I mean, I've had the first vaccine. It could be still a couple of months yet before I get the second vaccine. But even once the world turns, if it ever does return to normality, whatever normality is, but even, to, even when it does return to a point whereby I'm essentially out there moving in the world, doing photo shoots in full swing again, I'm not going to get rid of these podcasts. These are now here to stay. I think they're an extraordinarily important part of what I do, of my output and of my life. And um, so this is year one. We have completed uh, a whole year of podcasts of me talking a lot of hours. I think I worked out it's a prop give or take a couple. I've essentially talked pretty much nonsense, 72 hours worth of <laughs> podcasts in the last year. Um, so yeah, if you strung them all together, you'd be three days with no sleep to actually um, watch them all. Uh, so, which is kind of a bit amazing too. Um, yeah. Anyway, so yes. We've lasted a year. So what next? I suppose I carry on, but I want to develop this. I want to take it further. We've got an amazing community here. You know, uh, you're wonderful people and you come back and some of you have been bringing friends and introducing other people into it. And I want you to do more. If you know other people who you think might get something out of these podcasts, let them know. Become ambassadors for it. Let's grow this community uh, and help people advance their photography in a safe, fun environment. Um, so, what a, oh, a couple more things cropping up here. For, if the Anne says happy first anniversary. Oh, Vandana says she's binge watching. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that would probably take quite a lot out of you. Um, so yes, well, anybody who does go back and has started watching the first episodes, please accept my apologies for just how raw they are. Um, I dare say in a year's time, I'll probably be looking back at these and hopefully I will have sort of advanced and become sort of slightly smoother as well. I still manage to mess up an awful lot of the, the beginnings and, and transitions. Um, oh, Roy says, glad to hear you're going to keep going. I did wonder about that. Yes, I, I want to grow this. Um, I've got ideas, plans in the pipeline. Um, I'm not going to talk about it too much now, but I've got an idea of setting up a, a membership site. So if that's something you think you might be interested in, ideas will get discussed further on. But then I also want feedback. How would you like this podcast to grow and evolve? So we can talk more about these things in episodes to come. But yeah, what I really wanted to get across to you just at this point is that unless unforeseen things happen, uh, the podcasts are here to stay. Uh, I really enjoy doing them. I really enjoy you contributing to them, the connections we're building, uh, the community we're building. And uh, so long may they last. Right. So what? Oh, Cliff has come in and says, congratulations on reaching this milestone. And VG says, a great feat. I only wish we could all meet up sometime. One meet every year. Yeah, I, I mean, there's an element of that which I think will be fun. I mean, once if if the community continues to grow and 
we get past the point whereby there's travel restrictions and you know people have had the vaccines and we can start meeting up then there's nothing to stop in the future us having having meetups you know now on a very you know kind of spread across the world from texas to india and occasionally australia if katie's pulling an all-nighter um but if the community grows then there will also be pockets in different countries and then there's opportunities if people are traveling to other places to meet up with fellow members as well so yeah I, it's very easy for me to kind of start empire building and global domination within three years is the plan <laughs> um but yeah i can see a lot of potential for it so uh yeah, I'm going to I'm going to keep going with this and I hope you will help me keep going with it. Cool. OK, so. Um, oh, and Jackie says, looking forward to hearing your new plans for the future. Cool. Right. So, yeah, I just wanted to talk a little bit about that. And so now we're going to talk about this. note. I've got I've asked everybody to send me in their best photo. And well, first of all, I suppose there's what counts as a best photo. Um, I really what I said was it. There's, I, I suppose really what it was, was I was trying to make a distinction from particularly a favourite photo. Uh, back at the turn of the year, just as we were kind of heading, I think it was the last one of um, 2020, I said, send me in your favourite photo. And a lot of people sent in their favourite photos. And there was no stipulation on, it wasn't, didn't have to be favourite because of any kind of technical excellence. It was about an emotional connection. And so there's quite a few people sent in photos of, grandson, grandchild, uh, some event that they went to. And the photo quality itself might not have been excellent, but it didn't really matter because the emotional attachment was there. And that was important. For this one, I thought, well, OK, let's let's say, what do you consider to be your best photo? Now, it might be one that you've got an emotional attachment to, but really it also might be one that um, has done well in the competitions that you've put it into, or it's uh, received plaudits, or your friends all really love it. Or it might be one of those photos where you took the photo and it was beyond what you thought it was going to do. You, it, was, it was a better photo than you could have ever hoped for it to turn out. And I love those kind of photos. Periodically, I take a photo which is yeah, beyond what I thought I was capable of doing. And I get such a thrill from that. I get this, it's electric. Um, and in a way, that's kind of what keeps me going. I keep, you know, each time I go out and do a photo shoot, I'm hoping that I'm going to get that photo, which is beyond what I was capable of, what I feel I'm capable of doing. And of course, as I get better at photography, that happens less often. Um, and of course, in lockdown, when I'm not able to do some of the kind of big fancy shoots I love doing, so it makes it even harder to do. But in essence, that's what I'm chasing. So, I mean, to, I suppose to start then, um, what I'll do, and it's, let me throw up a photo. I'll, I'll put up my photo that I consider the best. Now, it's not necessarily to say it's my favourite, and it's not necessarily to say that it's the, um, well, it's, it's a combination of, let me show you this one seven deadly sins for those who saw the event page that i set up for tonight's podcast this was the one i put up and the reason for for, for me deciding on this one was because it ticks so many different boxes first of all it was in fact one of the most complex shoots i i've done in terms of there was a team of about 14 or 15 people involved in this i talk in quite in depth about this photo I can't remember exactly which week it was, a week or two before Christmas, back in December, there's an episode where I talk quite in depth about this. But the fact was, we've got seven different models. We had hairdressers, stylists, makeup artists, uh, plus um, Gillian from In-House Chocolates, who was supplying all the chocolate, the, the client, had a daughter who was videoing it. And so it was a huge amount of planning, collaboration and everything that went into creating this photo and even then once we set up the lights and we spent the whole day doing this photo and some various photos that went with it then it took me the best part of about a week and a half to edit all the photos as well because there were so many little details that I was going into um, that became really important to me 
to do. So, in, and then on top of that, um, it has been extraordinarily well received. Certainly the client loved it. And what was really wonderful was two Christmases ago, um, she printed this up a metre and a half wide for the Christmas display um, in, in the shop window, which looked fantastic. And then another bit of fun was um, in a photo crowd competition I entered into, um, Canon, the Canon magazine Photo Plus. Actually, um, I won that that one and part of the the winning of it was they then decided they they included it as a double page spread in the this is the january 2020 edition number 160 of the photo plus canon magazine so that was really cool as well i remember as well it was rather chuffed with that um and in fact, actually, even that one, I nearly missed. Uh, I, I got in contact and said, well, you know, I knew that it was supposed to be appearing in a magazine. And I sent a message saying, oh, which magazine will it be? And they said it would be issue number 161, the one after this. Um, now, oddly enough, this particular magazine, my wife happened to get me for Christmas to go in my Christmas stocking. And um, I didn't realise that um, they put it in a month earlier and you know lo and behold I kind of pull out the magazine start flicking through it and there's my picture in it so that was kind of a bit of a thrill so with all these kind of things with the fact that it's won competitions it's been printed up big it's received lots of plaudits and praise and it's been printed in a magazine you know I decided that if I had to sort of choose one where you're sort of ranking up all the scores this is the one I would go for so that's where I kind of wanted to start with that um I'll just check a couple more uh, comments. Uh, sorry, let me drag that over there. And what have we got? Uh, oh, Nuria says, such a big achievement, Kim. You have built bridges and connected people from different parts of the world through photography. And who knows, maybe one day we might meet up. Glad you'll carry on and look forward to more podcasts. That's lovely. Stacy says, I'm with my mum today. Sorry, I'm missing the podcast. We'll catch later. Oh, fully understandable, Stacy. That's fine. It will be here. I will be editing this tonight and then tomorrow this podcast will be up um, tomorrow afternoon UK time it will be up on YouTube uh, youtube.com forward slash Kim Ayres you can go and find all previous 52 episodes and by tomorrow this one as well uh, so and I also put them on my blog and anybody who's interested in reading my blog posts um, blog po uh, blogspot.com forward slash Kim Ayres and uh, each week I, I write up something. Sometimes it's related, it's usually inspired by the podcasts. Sometimes it's very loosely related. Sometimes it doesn't really have a lot to do with the podcast, but I do do a blog post every week. So that's something else you can check out if you want. Um, I will just also say that if you're finding these useful and you would like to support the, the podcast, then buymeacoffee.com forward slash Kim Ayres is the place to do it. It's not compulsory, but it is always appreciated. Um, what else have we got here? Um, okay, oh, Fiji and Sandra are um, wishing wishing Stacy the best and sending love and care to Stacy's mum. Yeah, so we're all with our thoughts are with you, Stacy, um, and uh, and with your mother and family during this difficult time. Um, Sandra says, great photo, Kim, makes me want to eat chocolate. Yes, and it, we did, and I ate a lot of chocolate that day. We, I didn't eat anything during the shoot, and then after the shoot, there was all this chocolate available where um, Gillian said, well, it's been handled and I can't take it back and sell it. So she made up these big pizza boxes full of chocolates for everybody to take away with them. And I ate so much chocolate that the following day I had a horrific hangover. Uh, hadn't drunk anything. It was just literally a sugar hangover from eating too much chocolate. Uh, great stuff, though. Um, OK, so that's my favourite photo. So next photo I'm going to show is so we're now going to sort of work through and I'll talk you through the photos. Now, coincidentally, um, the competition where I won on photo crowd this, our very own Jackie came second with it in it. And so she also featured in the magazine. Um, so these peppers dropping into the water. 
um, were a fantastic, um, yeah, a fantastic photo. Uh, so, well, let's let's let me flip back up the photo, and we'll I'll show you. Um, there we go. So you got a, a better copy of it there. Um, some of you will have seen other, you know, over the past couple of months, Jackie's, you know, Jackie's got a, a real way of dealing with dropping things into water. There was a quite amazing photo she put in a few weeks ago of um, <clears throat> lemons dropping down into glasses as well. Worth going back and taking a look at. So what Jackie says with this one is, um, where do we go? It was a difficult choice trying to find, come up with the best image. Uh, between two images, but eventually I chose this one, a three multicolored pepper splash. This image, I would not say is my favorite of all time, but it is obviously my best in achievements received. I think I can say I'm most proud of this one as it's the only image that's ever been published in a magazine and coincidentally belonged to the same magazine, which I got, you know, so that's what I was just talking about. Um, so, uh, oh, and she also says, I want to thank him for a great year of podcast during lockdown and fantastic mentor he's proven himself to be to all of us. I'm looking forward to another year of fantastic podcasts and learning experiences. If I had to choose a favourite episode of all the time, then it would be last week's due to the impressive effort everybody put in and the lively, energetic nature thereof. Yeah, and I think that uh, last week was, I was really bowled away by the amount of effort everybody put into last week's self-portrait challenge. Uh, absolutely astonishing. Um, so yeah, last week we had uh, lots of smug moments. And tonight's one big smug fest, really, to be honest, as well. Uh, I'm feeling really pleased about having done the year. I'm really pleased you're here. Um, and with that in mind, I do have to say, um, this is, you know, I, I did say, you know, will there be balloon, balloons? Will there be smugness? And will there be cake? And we have cake. <laughs> <laughs> so let me just I think I need to properly light a candle here um, yep there we go and we now have cake now I will say this cake made by my wife and daughter yesterday um, Actually, a much part of a much bigger one that was made, <laughs> um, and it's essentially it's a Nutella brownie uh, or hazelnut chocolate spread brownie. I think Maggie said it was. Um, uh, is it a Nigella recipe? I think you said it was. Um, it's essentially a jar of hazelnut chocolate spread um, with eggs mixed up, and it creates a little brownie. And then yeah, these tiny little slices of it fitted together with a bit of jam. So, um, yep, uh, Asim says, surely not going to make that stretch to 25 people. Well, you know, anyone who was listening last week, I did say you were perfectly, uh, you know, I, I was kind of half expecting you all to make your own cakes and then we could all sit and enjoy them together. So if you don't have cake, it's really only your, your own fault. <laughs> so, OK, I'm aware that the rest of you can't hear savour it with me, so I will have to savour it on your behalf. So, first of all, Happy anniversary to all of us. And then I really have better have a bite of this. Mm. 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 <laughs> yep. That's good. However, It does mean that I'm going to end up talking with my mouth full. So <laughs> didn't think that one through properly. OK, um, check it. Just check out a couple more comments here while I um, rinse some of the cake out of my mouth. <laughs> um, so, yeah, uh, VG says the chocolate photography fit into our celebration um, and lovely Jackie. Um, Oh, Sandra says, can you have Jackie as a guest speaker explaining how she created her photo? It's not a bad idea. Maybe not immediately. And I, I think actually Jackie would sort of probably feel quite horrified at the idea of being in front of everybody. 
Um, but at some point, I will say, in terms of developing things as, as, as the podcast go on, I do have ideas of doing interviews with other photographers. I have ideas of guest speakers, that kind of stuff. So it's not out of the question that maybe we could do that at some point as well. Um, Rosie says, congratulations, Jackie, lovely image. Uh, Mandy says, brilliant shot, Jackie. Um, and yep, then we've got the stretching the cake to 25 people. Yay, cake. Um, Vandana says, ooh la la. Uh, Nuria says, nice Nutella, yum yum. Uh, Mandy, lovely cake. Uh, Roberts, you didn't bring enough for everyone. Well, yes, I was just talking about that. Um, oh, Ben says, a cake-based photo challenge. <laughs> oh, there's an idea. Oh, Rosie says she has cake. Absolutely. Uh, brilliant then. Okay, well, yeah. Can you, can you slot? pictures into the comments i don't know you'll have to send us a photo but i'll tell you what rosie if you've got cake take a photo of the cake and stick it in the understanding photography with kim Ayers, uh facebook group page so we can all take a look um uh mandy says i have a nice lolly oh well that's not bad then um roy says hope you made a wish well of course i uh, probably guess um Ma uh, Nuria says happy anniversary cheers michelle says she's eating easter eggs oh, that's good enough um, Vandana says happy anniversary Kim so I kind of sing songy voice Jackie says cake looks delicious Peter Wilson says hello from Annan first time joining the podcast congratulations on the first year anniversary welcome Peter glad you could make it along uh, Russ is also welcoming Peter as well um, VG says cake looks delicious and now I've got to have something sweet yeah I've now got all that sugary chocolatey stuff running around my mouth and it's just really set me off making me crave something rotten here. So I'm gonna to have to distract myself and let's go on to the next photo. I don't think anybody put any photos of um, cake into, <laughs> into their thing. So let's move on then. After Jackie, then uh, we have April. So April says, it was very hard to pick a best photo. I asked my husband and son if they had a favourite and they could not answer me. It's very hard because it's a bit like asking someone what's your favourite mo movie. It's easier to say what is your favourite action movie or drama movie. It breaks it down. So it all depends on one's mood and interest. I like this photo of a mansion's landscape. I love nature and gardens. I tried to get a view that embraces the feeling and seren of serenity and beauty in this photo. It was taken in the state of Rhode Island. So April has sent us this beautiful, colorful photo. Um, and it, it does conjure up that sense of peace and tranquility, serenity, beautiful sunny day. You can kind of, you can smell the greenery, you can smell the flowers, um, you can feel the lovely warmth of sun caressing your skin with this. And I think the point that um, you make, April, which is very hard to pick, is absolutely true. Most photographers I know, if I say to them, what, what photo is your favorite or your best photo? Um, it's usually either the one I'm just, I've just done, the one I'm working on, or the one I'm hoping to take. <laughs> because there is a thing whereby we can take a photo and we can be ever so, ever so pleased with it. And it can be our favourite photo for that for a certain amount of time. And then as time goes on, we then take it. We have another favourite photo and then another favourite photo. So it very rarely ever stays forever in the one photo, in the one place. And it's the same thing with movies. You know, I mean, you can watch a movie and absolutely it's your best favourite movie ever. But but if you've watched it 10 times, it's maybe not such the best photo, uh, best movie ever. Um, so it is constantly changing. And I know that. And what I was very aware of, one of the reasons I said last week, one photo each, is because I knew if I didn't stipulate that, I would, probably everybody would send me about half a dozen photos because they couldn't narrow it down. And as it is, I've already had about three people stick in a more than one photo where I had to say, nope, sorry, just the one you've got to choose. And it's, it's really, well, part of it's so that we're not here for the next three weeks solid without any sleep or rest. <laughs> you know a three-week podcast um going through all the photos that everybody loves but it's also about that notion of making a choice and it's a given really that you know 
it your your it could change it could change from one hour to the next which which photo is your favorite and as as april says i think you know are you talking your favorite landscape your favorite um street photo your favorite the wildlife photo um and even those are all going to change but i what i really wanted i suppose the reason for doing this was i wanted to get a sort of a, an idea of what each of you consider to be your favorite you know i've got ideas of what i of my favorite photos um, but everybody's got a different taste. Everybody's got a different idea of what they consider to be a good photo or one that they're pleased with. And that's just brilliant. It doesn't have to, your favourite photo doesn't have to be my favourite photo. In fact, I'm more interested if your favourite photo isn't my favourite. Because I want to see how your mind works. I want to see how your, how, you know, what narratives attract you. So thanks for that, April. That was, that's a lot of fun. Um, OK, do a quick flick back. What else have we got? Uh, oh, Rosie says too late. She's eaten her cake, so she can't take a photo of it. Yep, I know. I've, I, the number of times I've, I've seen people with photos of a couple of crumbs on a plate saying I meant to take a photo of this cake beforehand. <laughs> uh, oh, Inga's joined us. Hi, Inga. Glad you could make it. Um, cool. Right. OK, so next photo um, sent in was from Truda. Now, I, I'm assuming you're pronouncing it. It's T-R-U-D-E. Trudy? Trude? Truder. I'll go for Truder. Um, and you can correct me if it if it uh, should be otherwise. Um, oh, Sandra says, beautiful setting, April. Um, so, let's go to Truder's photo. Now, she says, um, uh, this is... Her first time submitting anything to the, the blog. I think she was invited in by Inga. Um, so Truda says, uh, this mobile shot was really boring, a dull light. Then for the first time, I went crazy with Snapseed and exaggerated a lot, especially ambience and colours. And suddenly it was something completely different. I think I like it because I surprised myself and I think it has a surreal quality to it. And there, I think, is another really interesting aspect of photography. That photography isn't just going click with the camera. Photography is then editing. Before, in fact, actually, before you get to the editing, there's a selection process. And I've just realised I was probably going to go off on a tangent on that in the last, the last photo as well, which is how do you decide which one you're going to use? You know, because you could take 10 photos of, the same scene all slightly different and everybody would pick a different photo of those which they thought was the best but you have to decide and it's your decision when you decide I'm gonna I've got to select out of these ones which one I'm gonna I'm gonna do anything with which one I'm gonna show or which one I'm gonna edit that is your selection and it's very easy to get sidetracked by somebody else's selection and feel like you've got to please them but unless they are paying you unless the you, they are your customer. What you need to do is somehow work your own instinct up and go, what is it that appeals to me most? And try and get the best photo you can. And then you set about editing it. And editing it is about polishing it up. Now, I've not used Snapseed. I've seen a few people refer to it over the weeks on this. As far as I understand, it's an app where you can quickly add different filters kind of it's this shortcut stuff instead of having to learn a long complicated photoshop you can click this and give it different effects a bit like instagram has all these different kind of quick flick effects but i think snapseed allows you to do more than that and i think the f it's an interesting thing that you can dramatically change the mood and feel of a photo by the filter you put on it or by the combination of filters you put on it and if, or any form of editing, whether it's how you crop it right through to whether you boost particular colours or desaturate others or, um, you know, yeah, lighten up at certain areas or darken bits or, you know, however you want to edit it. These things can have a powerful effect. And, you know, so what's happened here is... Um, Truda's taken a photo with the phone, which wasn't really doing much for her. But then by playing around with the editing software, she's managed to create it into something which is way beyond what she thought um, 
was that anything that she had and was really pleased with it and that's great and I think that it's that kind of thing that then gives you the desire and impetus to kind of carry on and to experiment more and to explore more and uh, yeah I think that's, that's a really wonderful thing to do um, some people get very snotty about it it's like there's um, there are certain photographers I come across who uh, claim with a kind of snobbery that they are um, in-camera photographers meaning that what they do is you know the point you go click that's the end of photography anything you do after that is just mucking about with it and if you can't get the photo as it is in the camera then you're not a real photographer and it is so limited an idea in my opinion because you know it's a bit like saying if you were creating a poem is the first draft the most authentic no the first draft is usually a bit of a mess you edit it, you play with it, you then take this stanza and you put it down there and then you change that word and you move it about and you polish it until you end up with something that goes from a rough idea into something which is really quite interesting. And I think the process of editing is about creating the best version of what you have got. You still want to try and create the best photo you can. There's no doubt sometimes a bit of editing can rescue an otherwise mediocre photo. But I think where that happens is that at its best is if you can still, if you go out and you create, get the best photos you can, because then um, you have many more options with your editing. You can take the picture to several different places rather than just maybe there's only one thing you can do in order to rescue it. So always pursue photography and get the best photo you can. But then I'd actually, to be honest, I don't think any of you who are watching this are ever going to be going, oh, well, I don't have to worry about the photography because all I've got to do is press a button in Snapseed and it'll turn out fine. Um, if you were that kind of person, you wouldn't be watching this. <laughs> I'm pretty so sure of it. Nobody's going to sit through two hours of somebody blethering on about photography if they think all photography is is pressing a pressing a filter button. Um, instead, what you're doing is your your what I love about this, Truda, is that you're exploring, you're stepping beyond what you were just able to create in the photo. And I think that's a brilliant stepping stone to, to take you further and deeper into photography. So thank you for sending that one in. Um, OK, so what else have we got? Uh, oh, Paul says, uh, so pleased you stuck at it, Kim. Many congratulations from me and Alison. Oh, thank you, Paul. Appreciate that. And in fact, Paul is one of these who's been around more or less since the beginning, I think. Um, Right. OK, next photo uh, let's take a look at and uh, to, to, to share is Roy's. Now, this was this was kind of um, Roy's was there's a few who've submitted images which have been I've seen before. They've submitted them in here before, which is uh, kind of fun, really. Uh, so Roy, did anybody remember this one uh, from about a month or so ago when we did the minimalism challenge? I think it was. And Roy put in. Not exactly, well, it was this photo, but a, a differently edited version. And we sort of played around with this. Anyway, so Roy says, unfortunately, I can't share my most successful photo here as it's a monochrome print from back in the day of, of my oldest daughter when she was 12 and she's now 49. Well, OK, so yeah, <laughs> that's uh, quite a few years ago and obviously at a different time of, you know, analog photography. He says, oh, I said, he goes on to say, I will copy that at some time using the techniques um, outlined a few weeks back, but we didn't have time to do that for this week. So uh, that photo won several awards and was widely exhibited. Um, I had quite a long break from photography, but the fire was reignited at Christmas when my daughters, in a flash of inspiration, bought me a DSLR and I was hooked again. Now, I submitted the original of this image to Kim for critique some weeks ago. That's what I'm just saying. It was in for the, um, the minimalism challenge. I took on board his suggestions for improvement and submitted this version to a Guru Shots competition where it did quite well and will be in one of their exhibitions in Berlin later this year. Oh, that's great to hear. So well, that's a, well done, Roy. That's brilliant. Um, so I owe Kim thanks on two levels, his suggested improvements and also for introducing me to, to, to Guru Shots at a, an earlier podcast. Yeah, I mean, what I would say, there, there's a few sites around Photo Crowd, Guru Shots, Viewbug, various other ones where there are competition sites. And I think it's fine to, you know, I think it's, it's quite good to set yourself up an account with these ones. Just set up a free account to begin with and put images in, see how they do. Because we, we all have this problem of the fact we're too close to our photos. 
trying to get an external sense of how they're viewed is always useful and that can be one way. Now, you also have to be really careful in taking other people's opinions via these crowd sites with a certain pinch of salt. They are not expert photographers, mostly judging. Um, sometimes they have ones which have um, particular judges who are choosing, who are, you know, but often it's a crowd vote and there are particular themes which will do better. You can have really, really good photos which don't necessarily do so well. And over the year, one of the things that's happened quite often in critique is people have submitted images with the comment of essentially, I really like this photo, but it never does well in the crowd competitions and I don't know why. And then we've gone on to talk about why that particular photo might or might not do well in the crowd competitions or what you might need to do in order to make it more appealing. But there is a difference between crowd competition photo and which is largely, I suppose largely it comes down to in these crowd competition photos, people are skimming through at high speed. So you need to have something which is really going to get your whole message across in half a second. If you've gone to a really subtly created, lots of little detail, lots of narrative in bits going, relationships between one part of a photo and another, these things very often get missed in half a second. People don't see them. And so if you spend time with the photo, it might be a better photo, but it doesn't tend to do so well in crowd competition. So there's a place for them, which I think can be really, really useful. Um, but it's understanding there's a place for them. But I think the fact that you managed to get this one into the, Ber the Berlin exhibition, Roy, is fantastic. I do like this photo and I do like what you've done with it. I think it does work a lot better than like this, that um, the the nettle going straight up and that diagonal shadow is just beautiful. And it just and then the simplicity of the wall, there's tick texture in the wall. Um, and now that you've kind of you're closer into it than you had before, and it's not quite as contrasted, I think, at the bottom, the texture doesn't over overpower the uh, the shadow. Um, so, yeah, it's a lovely photo. So, yeah, thanks for thanks for putting that one in, Roy. Um, right. OK, so what have we got? Oh, Sandra says, I know what you mean, Kim, about the straight out of camera photographers, but you can do so much with photo editing. Um, yeah, absolutely. And it's, uh, I think it, it, part of it is it's also, now, if you are, if you are being a press photographer, if you are being a documentary photographer, if you have to really, you are showing things as they happen, then because editing can change the mood and feel and whole story of the photo, you have to be particularly careful how you edit it because you are essentially manipulating the truth. Even though photography, whether you can call it truth, is up there for debate anyway. But we're not in that process. We're not saying we are report. Here we are reporting live at this demonstration happening in this city at the moment, and the police are doing this, and the rioters are doing that, and we're trying to get to the truth with our camera. We're not doing that. We are doing photography, which we're showing to other people, um, with the idea of it being narrative, of it being storytelling, of it being evoking an emotion. That emo whether that emotion is just the serenity of the idea sort of sitting in a beautiful garden or whether it's, you know, the seven deadly sins of chocolate all around a table, each kind of trying to evoke a different emotion and interplay with each other. Um, so, yeah, I, th I think, but, you know, if you're not, if it's not absolute documentary, then I think you've got to be getting in there and editing and playing and try. And it's also having fun with it. You know, how many different stories can you even make out of the same photo? Some of you may remember a week or two ago, um, I think it was Robert put in a photo of a horse. Uh, and I put together six different ways you could edit the horse, or six different stories you could get out of it. So it's fun to kind of explore with the editing. Um, what else have we got here? So... Uh, oh, Naria says, well done, Roy. That's brilliant. Uh, Inga says, really like the texture and the different lines. Congrats on with the exhibition. Oh, Benito's joined us. Evening all. Sorry for the lateness. Uh, glad you could make it. Uh, uh, sorry, not Benito. Benetito. 
um, and uh, not looked at your photo yet, so yours is still to come. Uh, Michelle says, well done, Roy, good achievement. And uh, Asim says, congratulations, Roy, must be so proud. Oh, and um, Benedito says, happy first birthday, Kim. Thank you. Yes, and uh, you missed me, did miss me eating the cake. However, I've still got a little bit of it left, so I might take another mouthful at the end. So next photo then, um, I think we'll look at, um, oh yeah, Paul. Now, Paul sent in, uh, he, he sent in a photo. He also sent in another photo, which isn't his, but okay, let's tell you what he says. That's the easier thing to do. He says, hi, Paul. Uh, sorry, hi, Kim. Happy Easter. Happy anniversary. We were in New, uh, New York pre-pandemic I went to Grand Central Station to take some photos and I had in mind a version of the classic black and white image from the 1930s with the light streaming, streaming through the windows. And with that, this isn't Paul's photo. This is the kind of photo Paul saw and then thought that he would like to go for. Um, anyway, he then goes on to say, as you, uh, unfortunately, this does not occur anymore as there are now skyscrapers blocking the light from either side, which is rather disappointing. Um, as you would expect, I took loads of images, none of which quite captured what I was looking for. But in the editing, I tried overlaying several images and came up with ghostly figures, giving the impression of transitory people amidst the fixed surroundings, which I love. I hope you like it. And this is what he, he created. So here we have a real sense of you because he's he's high up. We've got that vaulted ceiling at the top there. You get that se real sense of the size and vastness of Grand Central Station. But if we kind of move down into the crowd, we can see here where he's done these sort of the ghostly figures where he's overlaid several photos together to give an impression of movement and time and people sort of, and the, as it says, the transitory nature of the travel where people are passing through. Nobody's hanging around uh, for any real length of time unless, well, well uh, <laughs> unless their train or bus isn't, isn't, hasn't arrived yet uh, or they work there. Um, but I thought that was, I thought it was really interesting. I, up on the stairs here as well, you can sort of see blurred figures coming down the steps as well. So we've got fixed figures and blurred figures and overlapping figures. Um, so I can imagine, I and mean, this is just unfortunately the Facebook version of it, but I would imagine that if you, you know, the original kind of full size, full resolution one, uh, offers you the chance to sort of really go in and explore and play around with the detail. And in a way, I suppose this, this photo here, um, encompasses two of the things that we've just been talking about. Um, one of which is the notion of editing and being able to edit in order to create something new, which wasn't there in the first one, which is great. And 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 the 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 second what was the second? I had a second idea there. Editing and mind gone. I can't remember what the other thing I was talking about was. Oh well, sorry about that, Paul. If I, if it occurs to me again. <laughs> I'll come back to it. Mm, right. OK. Uh, but yes, thank you for sending that one in, Paul. Um, oh, yes, I know what the second thing was. Second thing is that notion of this. Is, I can imagine this probably wouldn't do quite so well in crowd competitions because um, you wouldn't have time to really explore. This is a photo to be explored. This is a photo to spend time with and go in and look at all of the little details and and and, and spend, yeah, it, it, that would be a lot of fun. You know, it's, it's as you kind of explore, you've got the people standing over here, like I say, I suddenly notice the people coming down the stairs. And then of course there's an elevator, uh, sorry, um, not elevator, uh, escalator. Oh, goodness, my brain's gone. I need more chocolate. That's my problem. Um, it's got the escalator here with figures on as well. So it's the kind of thing where, yes, you need time to explore it. So it, you probably do well in, say, camera club competitions. Wouldn't do well in crowd vote competitions, I would imagine. So just a thought on that. So thanks very much for sending that one through, Paul. Um, so... What have we got here? Oh, a few more comments on um, Roy says, good sense of a busy station. Jill, I love the figures and the contrast between them and the straight lines and angles of the building. Becca says, really creative work. Sandra really loves the ghost figures. Uh, Vandana says, very dramatic. 
Cliff says Grand Central Station is stunning and you have done it justice, depicting both the grandeur and the bustle of it all. Mandy says very clever. Rosie says super image, Paul, very creative. Nicola loves the technique of movement. Uh, Vigi says it's an incredible capture. Maggie says it's a really fascinating photo. Uh, and Michelle says it's a very clever idea. So there you go. You're getting the, getting all the comments from uh, from here from the from the podcast viewers. Uh, so yeah, that's that's great. So thanks for thanks for sending that one in, Paul. And uh, Benedito also says he loves it. So next up, then uh, we're going to Robert, and this is another photo I've seen before, um, or a version, a different, slightly different version of it I saw before. So. Robert says, I believe this is the best photo that I've taken processed in the past year. I submitted it in an earlier podcast, but modified it by flipping it, changing it to black and white and taking down some of the clarity. The photo was taken on the first day of 2021, once in a century winter storm in Texas. I stayed in the Jeep as it was five degrees Fahrenheit or minus 15 degrees centigrade. But with the wind chill, it felt more like minus 10 Fahrenheit or minus 23 C. Um, I did a lot of post processing to get the final result. Viewing it on a larger monitor brings the flaws out and I'll probably touch it up over time. I feel like it captured the loneliness of the week. Millions of Texans were without power for days and the roads were impassable for non four wheel drive vehicles for a while. So, yeah, that's brilliant. And it, another, yeah, it's another interesting thing almost the reverse of the, the photo of Paul's, that Paul's photo is designed to be sort of blown up big and the editing in, at that point, you can really go in and appreciate the ghostly figures and what have you. For Robert, there's a sense of actually, this works really well at this screen size. I would imagine this will probably do quite well in the crowd competitions. There's a simple nature, it's kind of down, going down the minimalism road, um, it's a fantastic tree and the way you've edited it, you've edited out anything else which detracts attention from that tree. You've got the tree and you then you've just got and that, that road going down, that road into nowhere, into the whiteness, into the bleakness of the cold and the snow. And it looks more like it should be Minnesota than Texas for sure. And But there are these things that if you know what you're looking for, there are these sort of repeat patterns down here which is created by, or um, I'll look up here as well. You see these little streaks there. And it's created by effects that when you use Photoshop to enlarge a picture on one side, it will take certain parts of the photo and repeat the pattern. Now, if you've got something like rocks or grass, you're not going to notice that very much. But when you've got something which is relatively plain and not a lot in it, suddenly those details stand out. So in a way, at that point, yeah, you if you blow it up too large, you then start to see the edits. <laughs> um, but I, I, I think it's a lovely photo. And I think I, I the way you um, took what was already there and then really it was about removing the other aspects to emphasize the narrative, emphasize the story. Again, it's not about truth in that sense of literal truth, because literal truth, there were other trees and bits and pieces that kind of got in the way. But in terms of the deeper truth you get with the, that comes with a story is it beautifully sums up that sense of emptiness, coldness, isolation, um, yeah, it's, it's a lovely photo and I'm not surprised you're pleased with it. Uh, so thanks very much for sending that one in again, Robert. Or actually your new version of it, I should say, because, yeah, that's a different version. Um, so what else, what else have we got here? Um, oh, Shashi has joined us. It says, hi. Um, Jackie says, as long as we get the shot, even if it means freezing. <laughs> well, yes, but. He did actually, Robert did admit that he stayed in the, stayed in the car for that one and took it through the window. <laughs> no, I'm, I, yeah, absolutely. I would have done exactly the same thing. Um, uh, Sandra says, beautiful minimalist tree. Russ says, I like these when you submitted uh, them for a critique a few weeks ago. Love the simplicity and the drama. Roy says, I'm shivering still to look at it. Uh, Maggie says, beautiful, such a texture tree in the pale light. Uh, Robert says, thanks to all. Um, 
Vandana says it's beautiful, and Sam Asim sorry says uh, love the tr lonely tree, very powerful. Rosie says beautiful light on the tree and the road. Cool. Okay. So next, I'm going to move on to Diana, and uh, right, so where are we? Let's click that. So Diana says. Um, Congrats on your anniversary, Kim. Such a varied and supportive group. Uh, I've chosen this image as it received a judge's commendation, a number of likes, and did well in the competition. Uh, in a competition. Um, other photos did better, but I don't think they were better photos. <laughs> yep, well, we could always, always kind of feel that. The colour, shape, and texture of the oranges make them a great subject, and I like the way they pop against the teal background. And I think yeah, you're certainly right there. There's a, I mean, if you're talking color balance, it's one of those things we've not talked about a lot yet, and I'll probably at some point I will do do a podcast on the notion of complementary colors. If you're using essentially blue and orange, red and green, yellow and purple, if you've got your little color wheel, when you've got opposite colors, you can use them to really make certain things pop out of the of the picture um, and beautifully done with this with a bowl of oranges in that bluish kind of background um, goes on to say um, the chrome edge uh, providing it provides a leading line which is reflected in the shape of the oranges and the bowl i like the minimalist images um, become almost abstract where colors and shapes evoke a response so yeah another a very kind of minimalist photo that we've got it's about line, it's kind of curved lines, and two, well, three if you count the white, three colors, but it's keeping it simple. And you've got the, the reflected uh, ridges of the bowl, you know, creating a, a sort of different kind of reflection of the light um, underneath. So a very simple, but immediately grabbing kind of photo. So yes, I can imagine this one doing quite well in the competitions as well. Um, you're not having to think too much about lots of detail. It just takes you to a, a simplicity of it. So uh, brilliant. Thanks for sending that one in, Diana. Um, right. OK, so next up we have um, Michelle. And Michelle says, this is not my best photo, but one of my most liked. So again, I suppose there's a um, what we're talking about here, sorry, let's move on, is, <laughs> okay, the, the, it's one of those things that because I said best I, I, rather than favourite, it kind of moves out. And it, and it is sometimes it's trying to work out, you know, I've got this photo and it appears to be my best photo because everybody else loves it. It's not necessarily my favourite, but it does well elsewhere. Um, so this was, um, says, I took this photo uh, out walking around Portishead Marina one night. The sky was beautiful and, uh, and the atmosphere was quite romantic. I like the sky and the boats reflecting in the water, which gives the whole picture a warm colour. And it does that, that it's an incredible sunset. Um, about the, or the sun has now just disappeared behind the horizon. It's bouncing off the clouds. You've got those wonderful uh, sort of reddy pinks and purples. And then to have it reflected in uh, almost still water in the marina really create, and that is beautiful. But you've also got that blue hour effect um, with the town, with the, with the buildings as well. And it's one of these, um, one of these effects, I remember, uh, uh, very good landscape photographer pointing out to me years ago he said if you're going to do town photography if you want to create moody atmospheric town photography the best time to do it is what's called the blue hour which is either the hour before sunrise or the hour after sunset it might not be as long as an hour depending on what time of the year it is or which part of the, the country of the world you're in um, but basically just after the sun sets so the skies are getting darker but there's still plenty of light and bits of color in them but the street lights have come on and the house lights have come on. So you get the yellow of the of the lights of the buildings and the street lights. But you also get the blues of the skies, uh, or in this case, the pinks and the purples. So it ends up feeling very rich. And the, the colours in the, um, you know, it's almost like little stars beginning to sort of twinkle uh, as in, in the evenings. There's something always very powerful about that kind of as the light is changing 
it's quite primal. I suppose it goes way back, you know, to the point whereby, you know, our ancestors were living under the stars and the world changes as night approaches or as dawn approaches. Something, you know, the, the whole way we interact with the world and the way predators or prey might interact with us changes at these points. So something deeply primal within us when you sort of get around that time of, of the day or evening. So, yeah, thanks for sending that one in, Michelle. Um, so. Oh, Sandra says she loves the still life photo. Um, Becca says, oh, I feel like I'm on holiday looking at this beautiful. Sandra says beautiful sunset photo, which in my experience are very popular on photo crowd. Um, and Roy says, wish I was there. Uh, Naria says beautiful colours and reflection. Maggie says long summer evening hol evenings, holidays. Mm. <laughs> oh, holidays. When did we last have a holiday, Maggie? Too long ago. Too long ago. Um, uh, and Asim says, loving the reflection of the colours of the sky and the water. OK, excellent. Right. So let's move on to the next one. Next one comes from Russ. And so this is similarly a kind of just fractionally later but still within that blue hour and similarly using reflection of water. Quite a stunning photo, this one too, Russ. Um, rather than it being at a marina, um, it's down at a kind of Docklands. Um, looks like we've got the moon there. So let's, okay, let's see what Russ says. Russ says, hi Kim, hi gang. Um, sorry I'm late posting. It was, it did only get in this morning. I did say you have, kind of have to be a bit careful about Tuesday posting because there's no guarantee you'll make it, but yeah, it's okay. I managed to squeeze this one in, Russ. It says, uh, I've had a mad weekend processing about 6,000 photos from a weekend of motocross. Wow. And dealing with the subsequent orders. Wow. That's a lot of photos. That's a lot of processing. <laughs> um, after many hours of agonising, I decided I couldn't possibly select a favourite image as I have so many. Favourite portraits, favourite landscapes. Yeah, uh, for sure. The, the image I've selected for tonight is one of Gloucester Docks. I had gone there specifically to get some shots of the old warehouses at night and had the good fortune of the moon coming out from behind the cloud for this photo. I'm not sure if it's a little too bright and looks a bit more like a daytime shot, so I'll let you decide. And then he's given me the techie bits. Um, that's 20 second exposure. No, I don't think it looks too much like a daytime shoot. And I think it's exactly what I was just talking about with Michelle's shot there, Russ, Russ, which is it's kind of almost classic blue hour shot. And, I, you know, so you've got all those, the lights coming off the buildings, the yellow, orange, warm glows of the building and in the reflections. And you've got the cool blues of the sky and the water uh, reflecting the sky. And actually, to go back to what we were talking about, Diana's, um, pictures where if you're talking about the colour balance you have that yellowy orange on one side and you have the bluey purple on the other and it's classic complementary colours which uh, always tend to work rather well. So yeah lovely photo there Russ thanks for sharing that one with us. Um, right and uh, so um, oh, VG says, my favourite, the pink sky. So she's talking about um, Michelle's there. And uh, now Maddie says, love the colours and reflections in the water. Uh, Benetito says, stunning. These comments, I think, are a minute old, so we're on to Russ's one. Uh, Jill says, striking shot. Uh, Benetito says, 16 star filter, question um, mark. Okay, that's... Right. OK, so if we flip back, I guess what you're referring to there is if you look at the star, right, the I've talked before, somebody a few weeks ago, somebody asked me about the notion of how to get the sort of starburst effect. So if you look at this light here, you can see lots of little strands coming out of it. Or if you look up at the moon here, you see all the strands coming out of it. And in order to be able to do that, you need a very narrow aperture, usually. Um, it's the opposite of creating that soft bokeh effect with a wide aperture. A wide aperture creates a soft background, but this is a narrow. So what have you? All right. OK, so you've got this at a um, f14. So that's quite a narrow aperture. And when you go for a narrow aperture, if you have a little spurt of light, you're much more likely to get that starburst effect. Uh, now, 
how much of a starburst you get on it depends on the lens you've got um, generally speaking but uh, what Benetito is, is referring to is the idea of getting a, you can get filters you can put on which then create or exaggerate this effect and create more lines coming off it so that's uh, so uh, no Russ says no no filter used on this one so that's going purely on the um, the fact that he's got a narrow aperture set aside for it. Um, okay, uh, Nuria says stunning. Uh, Sandra says beautiful photo. Russ, Ross, yeah, Russ, sorry. Uh, Rosie says beautiful warehouse scene, Russ. Uh, I would also love to see some of the motocross images. <laughs> um, and Becca says me too. Um, and Shashi saying I'm Shashi. Uh, hi. Um, hi, Shashi. Uh, uh, VG says, lovely, lovely capture, the reflections. Uh, Benetito says, I'm an old school coking film shooter. <laughs> um, yeah, you do a lot with film, I seem to remember. That's right, yeah. Um, some really in interesting stuff. Okay, so, um, in fact, actually, you know, we're going to talk, to, I'm going to show you uh, Vandana's photo and then we're going to come on to ben Benetito's um, one. So, OK, let's let me flip back to here and we go to Vandana's photo. So uh, here we've got a beautiful snowy scene, a weeping willow just drooping down in the winter. Um, says, I feel this photograph turned out better than I thought. I felt the composition and balance were good and it gave me an overall sense of peace. And there we go. So we're back into this sort of what is it that makes a photo a favorite or a good one? Um, and in this case, it's that sense of you see something before you and you go, how well can I capture that? And you you capture. And if you get to a point where you go, you know what, this has turned out better than I thought, I better than I hoped, then you kind of feel really good about that. You know, it's a lovely it's a lovely experience. And it, it is a, such a, a lovely sense. So you've got the, the, the softness. You can almost hear the cr soft crunch of the snow underfoot. You can see the snow against the, the, the black of, of the tree there. Although you can also see darker patches against the light of the sky as well. Lovely edging of the snow um, against the, the, the branches as they're almost kind of creating that kind of edge light. Only instead of it being light, it's, it's the snow. Um, so yeah, cold, but, um, <laughs> but yeah, there's, there's, there's that, that quietness you always get with the snow as well. So yeah, a lovely photo. Glad you, could, glad you sent that one in, Bandana. Um, right, okay, so ah, now Ben, Benetito. Let's, uh, let's, let's go, because your, your photo is one of these technological marvels. This is one where anybody who hasn't seen it yet or heard how it was made is just going to um, kind of be slightly gobsmacked by it, I think. So here we go, the M31 Andromeda Galaxy. So I think, you can correct me if I'm wrong, I think that's the closest galaxy to um, ours, to the Milky Way, but it's still however many millions of light years away. Um, now, what he's got here is a whole bunch of information here and I'll, I'll read you I'll read you what uh, what he says okay let's just bring that picture yeah there we go so you can see the picture and you can see the blurb and I'll tell you what he says so this has to be the photo that gave me personally the greatest satisfaction this image was a labor of love taken over 100 hours over six weeks the best frames were then stacked and blended so essentially what happens is this is not done with one photo. You can't do this with one photo. And all these amazing kind of star photos that you see, whether they're coming from NASA or they're coming from wherever in the world, they are not a single image. They are multiple images taken over extended periods of time and then overlaid um, with multiple exposures, multiple wavelengths. Um, and, you know, then that and, and then edited. Uh, now, it's a whole world... I've not even scratched the surface of. I know, I know one or two people who do this kind of stuff, and I just sort of look at in amazement because, it, my God, it takes patience and dedication. And to talk about the idea of that many hours um, and time to do it. So, 
Uh, he goes on to say, this was the lifetime dream to take and in colour, inspired by an old photograph in an astronomy book, which was given to me by my grandfather. I fell in love with this old image of the galaxy. I've shot slide film and as technology got better and cheaper. I borrowed a ZW05 filter cam and set up with a friend. Now, at this point, I must admit, you've kind of lost me there on the, on the tech, but there could be other people who understand, so I'll still read it out. Uh, we drove out to a location in the middle of New Forest with the lovely dark skies and set up. Processing was a great learning exercise too, and even with a 32 gigabyte PC and a fairly, priced graphic, uh, fairly pricey graphic board, took ages to do. I printed it onto a 36 inch canvas and it has pride of place in my study. Arg uh, so uh, now to re referring down here, um, R, G and B. So six hours each of red filter, green filter and blue filter, basically. So again, you've got filters on because they're filtering out and filtering in different wavelengths of light. And so you get more by doing separate images um, in fact, actually, I think it was James Clark Maxwell. Interesting, you know, Ben. If Ben, if you're still watching this, I'm pretty certain. Were you even talking about this? Um, ben Craven and I last year both gave a talk on James Clark Maxwell, um, or a, a science festival rather. I didn't give it. I gave a talk on photography, and Ben was giving a talk on light. And one of the things I seem to remember, James Clark Maxwell was one of these people who even back in Victorian times, was one of the first people to take a colour photograph. He worked out that because red, green and blue have different wavelengths, he essentially, I think, took three photos with, even though they're all black and white, he took three black and white photos, but with different filters on the front of the camera, and then was able to colour match in the printing and overlay them in such a way that essentially you ended up with a three colour process. He's one of the first people to ever take, I think not one of, he was the first person to essentially take a colour photo using black and white and three different filters. So an extension of this then is doing something similar, that you are using different, different colour filters to filter different wavelengths and then in the editing process you're putting them all together again. Um, so yes, RGB is the red filter, green filter and blue filter, HA uh, six hours HA is hydrogen alpha filter, which is the red pink color once processed. Um, and think the image of the horsehead nebula. Oh, yeah, that's always done in a kind of bright pink. Yeah. Um, and L is a luminance filter, which is basically um, black and white. So there's six hours of the hydrogen filter, six hours each of the red, green and blue filters, three hours of the, the luminance filter. Um, all done over six weeks. So you've got to line it up. You, can, you can't do it all in one go because there's not that many hours where it's going to be in the sky. So you have to keep going back, right lighting, uh, right weather conditions, then line it up in exactly the same place as it was before. Astonishing amount of work. Uh, it just blows my mind the amount of work that went into that. So I'm not surprised it's your favourite. And I think if I'd done that, I would blow it up to a 36 inch canvas and have it on my wall as well. So thanks ever so much for sharing that one with us. Um, really, I mean, inspiring, quite an amazing photo that. Um, so. Oh, loads of comments about uh, from that one. Um, oh, and uh, Paul. Paul was saying, uh, thanks. For, Kim was right. That one did well in the camera club. <laughs> I know that's the Grand Central Station, I take it. Um, oh, yeah. Benedito says, yes, it is the uh, it is the close. Andromeda is the close one. And it's on a collision course with our Milky Way. But I think it will be several billion years before we have to worry about it. Uh, Cliff says, fantastic, Benedito. The time and effort into this has really paid off. Um, and then we, uh, Mandy says, stunning. Benedito says, thanks, Cliff. Won my first win in Guru Shots. Um, so Guru Shots being another one of these crowd sites where actually me, Cliffy and uh, Bellatito are all in a, a, a team group where we submit images, which is quite fun. Um, also with Russ and Michelle, I should also say, for that matter. Um, Jackie says, uh, great to see such devotion to um, get um, get what you want with the end results. Um, Nuria saying, wow. Maggie saying, amazing, wonderful, stunning. Um, Okay, so Benedita says the ZW-CCD camera that fits a telescope. 
Ah, right, okay, so you've got a particular camera that fits onto the telescope to make the most of the lens. Right, that makes sense, thank you. Uh, Russ says, every time I see this kind of image, it takes my breath away and makes me want to hang my camera up. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, well, it's about that thing. We'll, we'll always come across photos where we go, wow, that's more than I could ever do. But the point is, is that's about being inspired, not about being intimidated. Um, and also, it's, there's the specialities, you know. I mean, I don't have a photo like your one down at the Dockland, which I think is absolutely beautiful. So every, we've all got our different specialities and we all, you know, we're all chasing different things. And nobody is the absolute expert in absolutely every form of photography. And even if you are technically, nobody is on a narrative level because we all have our different narratives and we all have the different things that we're looking for. We all have the different things that we're chasing. So I suppose it's, it's an important thing really to allow yourself not to feel intimidated by other photographers. You know, I know some amazing landscape photographers who do landscapes that I could never hope to dream of doing. I can do better portraits than they can. <laughs> That's not said in any kind of derogatory way to them. It's just that landscapes are their passion and portraits are mine. Rosie has put up some amazing photos of wildlife, which I just can't get. I, I, and part of it is, I can I say, well, I don't have a 600 millimeter lens like she does. But it's not that. It's about the fact that I don't have the patience to do that. I don't have the way my brain is wired doesn't take me down those lines. So with the best will in the world, I'm never going to be able to take as good a wildlife photos as Rosie is. So that's OK, though. My speciality is in the portrait and narrative, and that's where I do my best stuff. Um, and each of you has your own passions and the bits you will do best at. Um, so if you see photos that are better than yours, feel pleased for them that they've taken, you know, that they've achieved photos that they, they're going to be pleased with feel inspired by the fact that somebody nobody just takes brilliant photos by accident they've got it through dedication so feel inspired by the fact that well if they you know they put the hours in if i put eight hours in maybe mine will get better too and they will do and that's really what it's about is to is to to find the inspiration not allow the better photos to feed the imposter syndrome where you just feel oh well I'm useless I'm no good at this everybody's better than me why should I bother everybody was terrible when they started nobody starts off with brilliance you just keep going at it and that's what's going to make you better and the fact that you're the kind of person who watches these podcasts means you're an obsessive with this you're an obsessive with photography and that's a good thing in, in this crowd so you will keep at it and you will get better and you can keep, of course, submitting the images for critique as well. And I'll do my best to help you. Um, so coming back from that tangent, uh, what have we else have we got? So Sandra says, love these kinds of images. It's really interesting to know how they're created. Amazing photo. Uh, Michelle says, great achievement. VG says, this is only possible for those who are passionate about both photography and astronomy. That's true. Um, Becca, incredible. Um, Asim says, Sir Patrick Moore, watch out. Um, Shashi says, I talked to you, sir, please permission. Hmm. Not sure. If you want to leave a comment, leave a comment. If you're wanting to send me a message, then send me a message. Uh, always quite happy to chat. Uh, Benetito says, that's uh, the best six hours of about 11 of each. <laughs> yes, that's right. It's six hours, but it's not even, you know, the whole, yes, this the best six out of 11. And then the, the 20, best 25% of those. Yeah, I can imagine. Uh, ben, go, uh, ben, come, ben Craven comes back in. We can ma match any colour by mixing three different colours, usually for lights, red, green and blue. But it doesn't have to be. Yeah, and that's another one where just we could probably at some point in the future do some kind of um, guest spot with Ben Craven here because Ben, what well, you know, what Ben doesn't know about light isn't worth knowing. It's, it's, it's huge amounts of knowledge and uh, fascinating um, stuff could come from Ben, which I think would be really interesting for the group. So at some point in the future, you know, maybe over the next year as we develop the podcast, uh, we'll have to try and get some kind of interview on that going, I think, Ben. 
Um, Bandano, wow, wow, wow. Um, Rosie says, amazing shot. Roy says, well done. Um, and a uh, couple on the thank you for um, sharing the information. Rosie's wanting to know, learn more about astrophotography and it's practicing with the moon. Um, and Benetito says, is it my best? It is good, but, uh, it, it, um, but it gives me the most satisfaction personally. So to me, it is what I'm most proud of, which was the labor of love. And like Kim said, it was about the inspiration behind it. Yeah, and that's it. It's, you, there's an emotional side, an emotional attachment to it for you as well, which is why you kind of get going with it. Um, Shashi, I still don't fully understand. You're saying, sir, small doubt I can talk your permission. Please reply. I don't know why. Are, are you watching the podcast, Shashi? If you're not watching the podcast, then this isn't really going to make much sense. Um, if you are watching the podcast, then if you really want to talk to me and it's not about leaving a comment, then uh, message me on Facebook. Thank you. Um, okay, right. So let's go to VG. And VG has submitted this one, which some of you may recognize as well from a few weeks ago with the uh, when we did the minimalism challenge. And this, um, I think, probably got the most smug points from me uh, in in that in that challenge. Uh, VG says my favourite photograph photo photograph submission. Uh, During the minimalist challenge, I was confused and clueless, and then saw this bright yellow wall with a rusted green hand pump, which was used to pump water some decades ago. The yellow and rusted greenish brown was interesting and I clicked this photo. It earned a good number of likes and comments from our community members. Yeah, I seem to remember a lot of people going wow with this. And I still love it. There is there's something, I love the texture, I love the simplicity of it. And I think there's something about that shade of yellow. <laughs> just does, it's, it's sunshine, it's warmth, it's just, uh, yeah, give it kind of. It, it, I don't know whether it's triggering something in the receptors behind my eyes, but it just gives me a wonderful warm glow every time I, I I look at this one. I keep kind of toying with the idea as to whether I should actually just use it for my screen, you know, desktop background. Um, uh, it really is a lovely image, uh, and uh, I'm glad I'm glad you submitted that one again, VG. It's um, it is one of my favourites for sure. Um, Okay, and um, so what else have we got here? Uh, oh, April's come in and said, hi everyone. April, you only just arrived. You missed it. I was talking about yours earlier on. Okay, um, so after this is over, don't do it just now, stick around till the end. But after this is over, you'll need to go back. I think you were about the second or third one in that I talked about. Um, okay. Uh, so a couple of people saying hi to April, welcoming her in. Uh, ben says he'd be happy to uh, to do something about light and colour if I want. That's, uh, that'd be great. Um, okay, April saying it's a good shot. Uh, Sandra says lovely photo, VG. Bandana says it's a very eye-catching image. Uh, Inga says I really like the colour tones and composition. Um, April says just got back from work. Well, yeah, it's, it's fine. I mean, the whole world doesn't stop just for these podcasts. I know it should really, but I guess the fact that you have other other things happening in your life as well. It's all right. I'll give you this time. <laughs> um, Cliff says, great shot, VG. Jim says, really like this image. VG would have it on my wall. Um, Roy says, great photo. And VG's thanking everyone for it. OK, so next up, Jim. Uh, let's go to his photo. Um, and Jim... This one says, I have submitted this photo, Time for Ice Cream, it's called. Uh, it won the Chairman's Challenge in my camera club on the theme of street photography in 2019. It was taken in Venice, March 2019. And thank you for the last 12 months. Um, oh, thank you for, for sticking around. Um, and yeah, it's a, it's a lovely. And it, we've got half a dozen, well, no, seven people sitting on a step all eating or involved in all sorts of things. She looks like she's eating some kind of pie or pasty. We've got the two girls here eating their ice cream, um, people looking at their phones, chat going on, things going backwards and forth, back and forth, um, conversation. But when you look at it, 
it is the two girls eating their ice cream that you get drawn to straight away. And I guess that's probably because everybody else is wearing something dark and the girls are wearing something bright. And also everybody else's head is kind of down, maybe apart from the, girl, the woman with the sunglasses. Uh, whereas these two, you can see more clearly and you see them diving with relish and enthusiasm into their ice cream. So lovely recapture. Nice. I love the, the bit at the back here where we've got the, the plants and the uh, looks like a whole bunch of uh, padlocks as well. And a lovely bit of shadow play there. The sun uh, behind uh, the, the gate barrier part there as well on the wall. Nice little diagonal of the wall in the background there. Yeah, rather beautiful photo. I can see why, you know, it sort of, it, it, it got the attention that it did. Um, nice, good use of black and white as well. That, you know, there's nice strong contrast in the, in the tones. It adds that feeling of it being a kind of bright sunny day, I think, where you want to sit and eat ice cream. So thanks very much for sending that one in, Jim. Um, right. Uh, Okay, so where are we at here? Um, so Benedito says, love candid street shots. Um, there's various bits of uh, conversation going backwards and forwards with people replying to other people. I kind of have to make sure that I don't get caught up too much in, <laughs> in those conversations. Um, so Sancho says, good street photography, Jim. It's what I aspire to. Mandy loves the black and white edit. Um, and then there's more conversation with Fiji replying to Maggie, Fiji replying to Asim. So yeah, lots of conversation going on there. Cool. Right. Okay. So we're about halfway through-ish, I think, maybe a little bit more. Not totally sure, but um, so I, I'll just take a moment to to remind those who've come in a little bit late um, that this is the anniversary edition. We have been going for a whole year, hence the balloons and lights. And the more observant of you may have even noticed that even the little mannequin has a little hat on as well. Um, so, uh, yeah, so what, and what I did was I asked people to send in their favorite, or not their favorite, their best photo, and they could define that however they wished, whether it was the one that achieved the most plaudits, one it's won competitions, or whether it's one where they felt that they put a lot of work and effort into it, um, or it just turned out so much better than they could have ever hoped for. And these are the kind of photos which uh, we all get a thrill from doing, I think. So, um, quick reminder, if you are in enjoying these podcasts for last year, or to con you know, continue to enjoy the podcast for the next year, you get a lot, anything out of it, and you would like to support them at all, then buymeacoffee.com forward slash Kim Ayres is the place to do it. Okay, cool. Let's go. Let's move on. So VG says, great street photography. Black and white is perfect. So now um, another one that some of you may have seen before, which is, oh, let me just, okay, that's not letting me do that. So I will have to double click over here and flip over. So this is our Ben's. Um, so Ben says, uh, this is, <laughs> he says, this is late, so I'm not expecting it to be included in the podcast. It's okay, Ben. I thought, I, how could I not include this one? Um, because the, the great thing about this, so this is from the, the self-portrait that Ben put in last week. But what I love, what I particularly love is uh, Ben says, although I've always taken reasonable care with composition and so on, my photography has always been about recording events or objects. I've only ever taken two photographs where the photograph is as a sort of essentially as a piece of art was the gold. And these were my last two challenge entries. Yeah, because I remember in the um, minimalism one, he did an amazing kind of capture of a shadow on steps. And... Uh, of these, I like the self-portrait best, so here it is again. And I think it's brilliant. I mean, we, we talked uh, a little bit at length about this photo last week, and it's, it's a great photo. And what I really love, though, is the fact that you put yourself into it, that, you know, up until recently, your photography has been, as you say, you know, record, recording events, make it, it's about precision, it's about making sure you photograph setups so that you can refer back to things, or all these kind of stuff. Now, watching these podcasts, getting involved with the podcast, you're kind of moving into the world of creative photography, narrative photography, storytelling photography. 
and I think that's just brilliant. How fantastic is that? Um, so yeah, if this you know, even though this you know really new photo, if it's your favourite for that, then that's brilliant. And I thank you so much, Ben, for for taking part, for contributing, and um, I think and I, it's inspiring as well. You know, it's that yeah, I've now discovered something new. I'm going to go for it, and you are, and it's brilliant. So. No, I, I'm. I, I think it's a great photo. I know you, we, yeah, uh, won't go into too. We we did talk quite a bit about it last week, but it's it's nice and moody, and I love the light on your face. Um, and it's got that very kind of dark painterly feel to it. So thanks very much for sending that one in, Ben. Uh, all right, this uh, file is leaping about over the place. So uh, right, where do we go? Um, Okay, Jim's thanking people for the positive comments, and then we're into, uh, Sandra says, love this photo, Ben, Michelle loves the photo, um, VG loves the photo, and Maggie loves the atmosphere you've created with that photo as well. Cool. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, um, I think uh, I'm kind of getting tripped up by the comments a little bit, because again, what we have is this problem is essentially, I'm about 20 to 30 seconds ahead of you. So, um, I can see a little screen down in the corner where I've just taken a drink of water and that was a little while back so it gets a little bit confusing for me. Um, so comments are cropping up here probably you know I say something you respond to it and then it's up to about a minute later before I actually sort of get around to reading it. Um, anyway so April saying yes I thought this pick was brilliant too. Oh, Inga says, I don't know your earlier photos, but it seems you are quite talented in the more arty photos. So, yeah, lots of praise there, Ben. Right. OK, so next up, then we're going for Mandy. Uh, now, the photo, this is one I've seen from Mandy, or it's a slightly different version of one I've seen from Mandy before. I think the one that Mandy did before was uh, she sent in once before, which we did a, a little bit of playing around and critique was a landscape version. And this now is a portrait version um, and it's a beautiful, beautiful mill Old Mill in the Lake District, um, fantastic um, water tumbling over the rocks. Um, again, that see that starburst effect up in there. That's what we were talking earlier about a, a narrow um, aperture. Uh, I can't be haven't actually said what what your settings were in this one, Sandra. But uh, that narrow aperture is what helps to give that starburst effect. And then we talked about different editing techniques. I seem to remember at the time. Um, very soft, very, very painterly, very moody. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's slight, slightly slower shutter speed in order to get that kind of creaminess movement of the water as well. So very moody, very atmospheric. So Mandy says, uh, firstly, I want to say a big congratulations and thank you, Kim. Oh, thank you. Uh, not only for your enthusiasm, but your support, advice and encouragement. Looking forward to another year. Um, I think this is one of my best images, really happy on how it turned out, and particularly the sun bursting through the trees. Although I had to stand in the fast running water, balancing on slippery rocks, resulting in getting pretty damp in the process. You know, suffering for your art. Um, but I think it was worth the effort. It absolutely was. Uh, it's an amazing place, an amazing scene, and a beautiful combination of light and texture. Um, and color and yeah and you've edited it up so it's just it, it has that fantastic quality to it so um thanks for sending that one in again mandy i think i am right in the fact that it was a, a landscape version rather than a portrait version that we we played around with the editing in the um in the critique section but it, so this is quite interesting to see it this way as well i, you know, I think what it does is it makes more of the sense of the depth of the river coming down through the photo Whereas it sort of moved across the photo, and so therefore I think your eye was drawn more to it made more of the wall and the mill in the other one. So it's a slightly different balance in that, which is which is really interesting to see with the crop. So thanks for that, Mandy. <coughs> Excuse me. Right. So we have. Uh, uh, where are we? Yep, okay, so yes, Michelle, a uh, well, few people here saying, I remember this, it was stunning, VG saying, uh, looks like a fairy tale backdrop, Nicola, stunning with magical light, Michelle, this photo really makes me want to be there, Sandra, lovely photo, Mandy, and great starburst effect, Jill says, stunning, so much to take in. 
April says, I love this photo. I like it in the wider version, the landscape version. Uh, Nuria says, so inviting, Mandy. Rosie says, beautiful light and water. Paul says, great image, Mandy. Russ says, lovely, love this photo, beautiful. Roy, lovely texture. And Diana, a beautiful image, Mandy. Um, Mandy says, yes, it was. Oh, so yes, it was. It was in landscape originally. BG says, the circle reminds me of Lord of the Rings. <laughs> It does have that kind of feel to it. It's almost more kind of Hobbiton, I think. Ben says, I think you've got the shutter speed just right to capture the look of the moving moving water. It can be overdone, but I think this is just right. Cliff says, great capture, Mandy. Seam says, love the warmth of the image. Uh, beautiful. And Mandy's thanking a few people for it as well. Cool. All right, let's move on. So I think our next photo is going to be Betty. So Betty, first time here, first time submitting something. So let's sorry, minimize that. And Betty says, I think this is my best photo, though I have fa I have many favorites for different reasons. But this one has received multiple awards and commendations. And again, I think it's that bit where, yes, we have talking earlier. We have different favorites for different reasons. This one, I can see, again, I can imagine this probably doing really well in the crowd competitions. It's instantly accessible. You've got the lovely diagonals of the valley. You've got that brilliant, again, starburst effect. So although I don't know what your settings were on the camera, I would imagine that it's a narrow aperture again. And it would have to be because not only is the the hills in the background in focus, but the, the foreground, even the, the trees down in the foreground here are in focus. So to have that amount of focus all the way through, I would imagine it's go, probably going to be something like an F14, 16 or above. So very narrow aperture, but as well as giving you that ability to keep it in focus all the way through, it also then uh, creates that starburst effect coming from the sun. Beautiful sense of light coming down into the valley as the sun's just tipping over uh, the horizon. I, love, I do love that little streak where of the shadow as well of the hill and we've got the, the light catching that. So beautifully layered. So yeah, I can understand why you're happy with this one, Betty. And so, and welcome, you know, if this is your first, first submission, I hope it's not your last, so stick around. Right, okay. Um, but where are we next? So, uh, right, Becca says gorgeous layers. Maggie says the layers are gorgeous. Oh, Benetito saying have fun all. Uh, have to go out. We'll catch up later with the, the podcast. Well, glad you were around while we chatted about your, your Andromeda photo. Um, enjoy the rest of your evening. VG says, which place is this? The layers and the layers of the hills. I, don't, I haven't seen any comments from Betty, so I don't think she's necessarily watching live, but with a bit of luck, she might be watching um, in the on the repeat, in which case, Betty, if you could, yeah, let us know where it is. It's a lovely, lovely, quite an amazing place. Sandra says, stunning photo, Betty. April says, we'd love to be there. Love the nature photos. Jill goes, those layers. And uh, Rosie says, I love the layers and the light. Inga says, great capture. So lots of positive feedback with that. Brilliant. Next up, then, we're going to go for Sandra, I think. So, oh, yeah. Now, Sandra sent me two images and I said, sorry, got to narrow it down to one. Uh, so this was the one she decided to go with. So Sandra says, I decided to upload a photo that I took over last um, the last week because I was really pleased with how it turned out. It's the cherry blossom taken on Monday. I presume that's Monday last week because this one was only put in yesterday. I love I love the way the blossom in the background is blurred and looks more like a painting and the rest of the background is bouquet. So yes, this is this is going back to exactly the opposite of what we were talking about just now with the narrow aperture. So the narrow aperture keeps everything in focus and allows for that starburst effect with the light. Whereas the wide aperture means that not much is in focus, only the front little bits of blossom are in focus then goes out of focus very quickly, <clears throat> you don't end up with any starburst effect. Instead, you end up with very kind of all these circles, um, a sort of circular effect in the, in the softness of the background. So it's a beautiful quality of the blur, the bokeh is um, part of this photo. 
lovely soft reds or pinks and uh, running being repeated in the background there little bits of blue sky in the background yeah beautiful colors uh, lovely sense of softness I think really yeah softness I just can feels like the key word with this and that spring that that that, that just the blossoms just start. I mean cherry blossom is so beautiful and just as it's kind of coming out and you can you can almost smell not the blossom just the the air around it so very evocative very uh, very now because I, i'm going out for my walks i'm starting to see places where the cherry blossom is coming up but obviously depending on where you are in the country it's either been out for a few weeks already or it's getting ready to appear or disappear under this snow again <laughs> So thanks for sending that in, Sandra. Really beautiful photo. Um, now, where are we? So, yep, uh, Nuria says, beautiful shot, Sandra. Maggie says, Be very beautiful texture blossom. April says, shallow depth technique, like the blur in the background. Cliff says, lovely bokeh. And Mandy says, so, so pretty. Ross says, lovely dreamy quality to this great shop great uh, great shot great job and bg says a beautiful bokeh shot sandra brilliant now interesting i mean it is uh, next photo up is another one uh which again has been submitted in fact was submitted last week and got a lot of positive uh feedback and i love this i love the fact that i mean that's what probably close to about half a dozen of the photos that have been put in are photos that people have put into this podcast before now and either they you know it's part of a challenge and they got good feedback from it or like in Roy's case it was put in as part of you know it was critiqued and then it's been re-edited I think with Robert too um, and these and then, and then these images have now been put back in as favorites oh, something rather lovely about that it kind of it's part of this podcast it's kind of, makes it feel like again part of that community that we're sharing we're sharing images that we love we enjoy that others have seen and praised us for and it's meaningful it's meaningful to us we're we, we're getting the positive feedback from our peers and from you know our community within this group and it's these kind of things which i think just really help to reinforce certainly for me why I love doing these podcasts and why I kind of keep back coming back to them and why I want to continue doing them so yeah kudos to you all smug points all round <laughs> so running on from that so this one is the one that Nicola put in last week which got a lot of comments and praise and Nicola says, this is my best photo submission. My attempt at the self-portrait for Kim's challenge set just last week, in fact. I set out to take this photo with a real purpose in mind, which was to be thought-provoking. I let my imagination run wild with this, and I was pleasantly surprised that the shot featured the personality and punch I thought I could only dream of in creating a photograph. And that's it, you know, set out to take the photo, you know, set out to play and then actually end up creating something where you just, once you've got it back and you go, oh, wow, this is brilliant. This has turned out, you know, just either just how I wanted it or even better than how I wanted it. Um, it goes on. I think it speaks volume about the inspirational, easy to understand advice that Kim provides in his podcasts. Uh, wow. Well, yeah, OK, I'll allow myself a smug moment. <laughs> I love giving the advice. But what I really love is i mean i can talk about this stuff but doesn't mean anybody's going to do anything with it but if you take these ideas and you go away and you create something you've created it you could have picked up this bit of advice from youtube or from anywhere else as well i'm pleased of course i'm pleased it gives me a sense of validation that you've taken on board things that i've said but it is about you. It's about what you've done. I've said a few words. You've gone away and taken however many hundreds of photos running around in a dark garage through the assault course of trying not to trip over things um, in order to take the photo. And that's that's the that's the power of it. And I think it's brilliant. Um, 
So it goes on, congratulations on reaching the one year anniversary and thank you for your highly valued expertise, input and feedback so far. Well, yeah, thank you. And thank you. And thank you for turning up and supporting it too. Uh, hugely appreciated. So where are we? Uh, Sandra saying, thank you for all your lovely comments. Um, oh, Maggie says, hooray for smug points. <laughs> I suppose I should have been throwing out smug points liberally this evening. Yeah, I suppose I th everybody gets a smug point. You're putting in photos, you're contributing. This is a party, this is a celebration. Smug points for everybody! <laughs> uh, Maggie says, great to see this again. Nicola. Uh, Becca says, uh, so good to see everyone's quality. Mandy says, very creative, Nicola. Russ says, such a powerful shot, this one. Fantastic image, Nicola. Sancha says, great image, Nicola. Michelle says, really clever idea, really inspirational. Paul says, stunning. Cliff says, really clever self-portrait. I was watching on Catch Up last week, so couldn't comment. But the addition of the branches really adds to the image. And I've just realised, Cliff, you're here. You're watching with us because Cliff was regularly watching live before but then work patterns have shifted and uh, I thought it's still going to be a few weeks before you're able to or are you just kind of quickly nipping in while you're sort of saying that you've nipped off to the toilet and taking a quick look on the phone um glad you're able to watch it live even if it's just for a few minutes Cliff good to see you um so what else have we got here VG says we'd, lo uh, we'd love to look at this photo anytime Nicola Ben says the frame makes it looks look like a framed picture that's been tossed aside and the subject of the picture is objecting to that treatment. <laughs> that's a lovely interpretation. Nicholas says, thank you to all. Still feeling smug. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, Russ says, I agree. Uh, I agree, Cliff adds to the drama. Roy says, powerful yet somehow disturbing image. April says, needs to be in a horror magazine. Real professional looking. Cool. Right. Okay. Well, Cliff, are you still about? Because we are about to... Uh, just about to show your photo and then maybe you can run back to work so this is Cliff's photo prepare to be dazzled and amazed beautiful photo this one and I do know that this one does well in the crowd competition ones because on the Guru Shots team that we're in he quite often submits this one and it usually does score pretty pretty highly so Cliff says can I start by saying thanks for a fantastic year of podcast Kim you can always start with that <laughs> Very hard to distinguish between best and favourite. Absolutely. I think this one, though, is technically my best shot. It was taken at a portrait training day, and I was given pointers on lighting. After receiving the information in the class, all of the settings, light positioning, and direction of model were all my choices. I have another version where the model is looking straight down the lens. But for this instance, I prefer this pose. And sometimes it does. I, for those who remember when we were doing the... I was doing... I, I did that portrait of my daughter, Meg, to in the style of a kind of 17th century Dutch master. And I talked then about the fact that I had a version of that where Meg was looking directly at the camera. But then the one that I decided to edit in the end, she wasn't. She was sort of looking down because I felt that that gave the mood. And you really have to decide at the time, you, well, at the time you're going through the photos and you're deciding what you're going to edit up. That's the point where you suddenly go, the one where the eyes are connecting with the camera, that does it for me. Or the one where the person is looking away does it for me more. And it all depends which mood you happen to be going for. And in this case, we kind of feel like we're observing in a story. If she was looking at us, then we would be part of that story. Like we'd just been introduced to this person or she's just noticed that we happen to be standing there. The way she's looking now, we don't know. She doesn't necessarily know that we're here. So that creates a different feeling. So it says, I feel I prefer this pose. I feel that it tells the story with the eyes looking off into the distance. It was the first time I'd ever been aware of backlighting. And yeah, I'm back. I've talked before. It's a while since I've really talked about backlighting, but I have talked about it quite a lot before and I will talk about it again. I tend to feel backlighting is like the, the photographer's secret weapon. Once you really get the understanding of backlighting, you can massively change a huge amount of your, your photography just shifts up a, up a level it's, it's quite interesting this sort of slight little tangent here on some sites i belong to photo crowd and uh, being an example i'll often see, i'll see somebody who's won a competition or just always got in contact with me and i will go and look at their portfolio and i can be really impressed with what they're doing 
and be, but suddenly be very aware that they've never really thought about backlighting, that everything is lit occasionally side, mostly from the front. But I think if you can mask the idea of a light behind, you'll find that the images just pop, not every photo, but in an awful lot of cases, it's a hugely useful one to have in your toolbox. So perhaps I might actually, maybe I should do that in sometime in the next few weeks, actually have like a little kind of backlighting special on, on this again, just to kind of remind. It's worth talking about again, I think for sure. Anyway, Cliff goes on. Right, it was the first time I was aware of backlighting and if I'm being really picky perhaps, it's, it's a bit hot behind the umbrella. And what he's really talking about is a sort of brighter patch uh, just there. And if I was shooting this again, I think I'd turn that light down a bit. That's fair enough, you're always good to learn from these things. But with a bit of post-processing, I'm really happy with the final image. I'm probably not going to be around for the live version again, but I'll catch it up on YouTube. Ah, that's why I thought you weren't going to be around. So if you are about, good to see you again there, Cliff. So let's, okay, let's flip back, um, see if Cliff left any comments. I know everybody's saying hi. So he must have just been a fl flying visit. <laughs> So where are we? Uh, Becca says, wow, lovely Cliff. Nuria says, I love this one, Cliff. April says, beautiful woman, like the lace umbrella. Vigi says, explain to Cliff straight from period drama. Sandra, lovely studio portrait. Inga says, wonderful light through the umbrella. Um, yeah, part of the idea of if you've got a white umbrella, when the, the, the light hits, it kind of diffuses and spreads, which is, is a, quite a nice trick. Inga says, wonderful light through the umbrella. I think I think I just said that one. <laughs> Nicholas says classy and beautiful shot, Cliff. Jill says excellent shot. Asim says nice shot, Cliff. Love the lighting. Michelle says I do love the costume. Perhaps this helps to make the photo. I really wish I could do photos like this. I think actually, Michelle, it is one of those things where look for opportunities. Find the there are you can find people about. There are people who are costume makers or people who you know local dra amateur dramatics clubs go to go to a local theater find um and this is a really good place for, for a way of doing this you find find local theater groups they are always desperate for good photography they're putting on a play they're going to have the costumes approach them and say look you know i'm quite happy would you like to do some Publicity, I'll do some publicity for, for photography for you. If you're not having to worry about payment, it's a brilliant way of practicing into stage narrative photography where you get people who've got really cool costumes. They're all actors on the stage. They all want to look part. They want to inhabit their characters. And you can have real fun with that. And if they're like doing period pieces and they've got period outfits, go off and find some place to do it in, you know, whether it's an old warehouse or it's a beautiful bit of landscape or even if it's on the street or even if it's just up against a brick wall and then play with your lighting. It's an opportunity to play. And if they're getting free photos out of it for to publicize their, their drama, they'll be only too happy to. So that's one of those things. If, if you're looking for the opportunity to, to start, you know, getting hold of people, your local theatre is is really one of the best places to get to, to do that. Where are we? Uh, so Sandra says, I love the backlighting of the flowers as it gives the bokeh effect to your photos, which I love. Jim says, beautiful shot, lighting is perfect. Russ says, great image, Cliff. Really like this image before, as uh, really like this image, as I've mentioned before. Cliff says, still here, finished earlier than expected. Woohoo. <laughs> okay, great. You're, you're getting all the praise live then. Superb. Um, Cliff says, couldn't miss the first anniversary. Oh, well. Oh, shucks. How lovely. Cool. OK, so what are we on to now? Let's move on to Jill. So Jill's photo. Ah, Jill sent me two. I made her for, force her to, to just pick one. And this was the one she picked. So Jill says, I consider this to be my best photo. A long exposure taken at sunset in southwest Scotland. It was a sublime evening. And my reason for choosing it might well be with my emotional response to what Mother Nature provided that night. Flickr which is uh, another photography site, however, considers one of my best uh, shots to be the one, the, another one that I took on the same night, which she also put in. And I said, well, choose one then. And she decided not to go for now. That's, I mean, that's an interesting one. So she, so Jill put in two photos. There's this one, there's another one. On a basic level, similar, is a long exposure in the evening, but there are, there are a different feel to it. 
And on that photo site, the other photo does better, but this is the one that Jill per personally prefers. And I think that's important to make that distinction. And it's good for you to understand that. And it's kind of why I wanted you to choose the one that you wanted to put forward. There is this thing you will develop. Your style comes out of your choices. If you are constantly chasing somebody else's choices, you will never fully develop your own style. I mean, the, the, the crowd places are great, are fun and have a lot going for them. But you always have to be aware of the danger that you can end up creating photos to please the crowd rather than to please yourself. First and foremost, please yourself. Fine. If you've got photos that will please the crowd, yeah, use them, have fun with them, you know, and it's a huge amount of fun. But I think the choices you make are what makes your photos as opposed to somebody else's photos. We've talked before about the fact you can have three people standing in exactly the same spot with exactly the same camera at exactly the same time and they will all take different photos. That Each person is making decisions based on their personality, their lifetime's experiences. And you learn to develop that. That's essentially what gives you your authentic voice. That's what gives you. So over the years, it then becomes a case of where you can start to say, well, that's a Jill photo, that's a Sandra photo, that's a Rosie photo, that's a Kim photo, that's a Cliff photo, that's a Russ photo. It's all through the choices you make. So you chose this one, and personally, I agree from the two that you you, you showed. I really love this one too. Um, you think you you find the other one, you find this one more more natural than the other one felt a bit harsh. I mean, these are fun kind of ones to do. So you've got a long exposure at sunset or again, just, just after sunset. So I don't know how many seconds you had this one on for, uh, but it essentially it allows the sea to have that soft, milky quality to it. And then the, the, the reflections there, the sky, and then again, you've got that color shift that we were talking. So you've got the blues that then move through to the kind of peachy oranges over on the right. So you've kind of got again got that kind of color contra um, color balance thing going on as well. So beautiful shot. So thanks for sending that one in, Jill. So com uh, more comments. We have Michelle says beautiful photo, Jill. Very calming. Rosie says, beautiful shot. Jill, I always love your long exposure images. Inga says, lovely and dreamy. Maggie says, love the subtlety here. Becca says, beautiful. Russ says, that's a really beautiful photo, Jill. Loads and loads of atmosphere. I can almost imagine Excalibur appearing out of the water. Yeah, get friends to lie, lie underwater holding their breath with a, with a sword aloft. That would be fun. April says, very good point, Kim. We try to please the crowd. We becomes cookie cutter like. Yes, we we end up creating photos like everybody else. Cliff says, really like the long exposure. This is a very soothing image. Sandra says, beautiful sunset photo, Jill. VG says, this is another favorite, Jill. Exposure of the waves, the smoothness of the rock and a dusky sky. Maddie says, good shot, Jill. And Jill comes in with a reply. When I thought about why the other was more popular, it was only because it was promoted by Flickr Explore, so had more exposure. Right, and Jackie says, stunning image, Jill. Cool, excellent, right, so. Let's move on now to Sophie. And Sophie says, I chose this photo for a lot of reasons. I love nature and hiking, love mountains and climbing, love the bright and cheerful colors, and it captures the power and beauty of nature serenity. Also has nice reflections. I'm sorry that I just couldn't take a wider view. So yeah, that's a pretty stunning landscape. And it's another one of these where you just kind of go, I need a holiday. I desperately want a holiday. You can smell that kind of crisp mountain air there, I think, especially in the, in the coolness. I bet that water was quite cool but, uh, as well. You kind of have a sense of elevation that like you're really quite high up here. Uh, now, the wider photo, this is where sometimes what you can do is take two or three photos and then stitch them together. If you've got Photoshop, there's ways of doing it in Photoshop, but there's an awful lot of programs now have panorama software. And some cameras even have them built in. And I've seen quite a few, even phone, 
phones have these as well where you've got panoramic settings so you can do this and actually it will stitch the photos together but failing that just don't go click 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 and get a wider photo and then but make sure you've got at least half the photo is overlapping with the previous one don't take it right to the edge because then it really won't line up properly but if half the photo is overlapping with the last one then you can find that you can layer them up a bit more easily or if you've got the software that is then stitching them together it will be able to do it more effectively for you so yeah at that point then having a wider sense it all depends on the mountains you've got and the amount of reflection you want to get in but yeah mm. yeah it makes me yearn for holidays that does so thanks for sending that one in sophie okay so what have we got here? Uh, Jill's thanking people for the comments. And then uh, April says, agreed, Sophie, love the photo, looks like a painting. Michelle, lovely reflection, great landscape. Rosie says, terrific landscape, Sophie. VG says, wallpaper shot. I drew something in this color scheme a few months back. So my dream was almost sprung to life. I was stunned. Mandy says, beautiful. Becca says, stunning landscape, love the color. Excellent. So next up then, we're going to go for Inga. Uh, I will say we're down to probably about the last half dozen for those who are thinking, how long is this going to go on for? Oh my God, we have gone on for two and a half hours. I better speed up a little bit, I think. This is turning into something of an epic. So Inga says, I'm quite happy with this composition and the reflections here. I also managed not to be reflected. Uh, like the contrast between the ball and the lines in the glass wall and three levels of sky and clouds was shot with an iPhone X. This is one of two steel balls constructed to receive some sound waves from the bridge behind. It's a piece of art in Drammen in Norway. How on earth did you manage to not be in the photo? Have you just photoshopped yourself out? Am I looking for little bits whereby... You may be kind of you photo or you know, is that is that a little program on the on the on the iPhone that's allowed you to do it? I kinda of think it must be, because otherwise how on earth could you stand there and not be in it? And there's some very weird quirk of um reflections. <laughs> However, it is beautiful and that, you're right, you've got all you've got the lines, you've got this kind of it's almost like a giant lens ball in some way, except for the fact that it's reflecting rather than you're seeing through it. So that's kind of fun. But actually what, what Inga did, because I was a bit confused by the bit where he said uh, one of two steel balls constructed to receive sound waves. But rather wonderfully, in the comments on this, you actually put in oops, from another angle to show what that is. And you can see the, the, the curves here where it's um, taking it. And actually, have we got, is that you? Is that you, Inga? Have we finally found you just kind of in the edge of the photo? Uh, I, I, I've got no idea. I can't even begin to imagine what that might sound like. It sounds really, it sounds really interesting thing to do. So if anybody's heading for Norway, that's the place to go and visit. <laughs> so thanks for sending that one in, Inga. Um, well, where are we? So Cliff says, if I'm shooting for panorama, I find the best results come from several portrait oriented images. Well, that's true as well, actually. Instead of just going to actually turn it that way and take your images you might actually find you it gives you more options in the editing april says very cool shot mandy says brilliant shot inga says no no photoshop well then that's impressive uh i, I still don't know quite how you managed to do that one then asim says loving the positioning of the steel vibe ball inga amazing shot cliff says a fantastic scene you've captured there uh oh sophie right so cliff slightly behind uh vg says beautiful inga Russ says, very interesting reflections, great shot. Rose says, intriguing shot. And Sandra says, dramatic shot, Inga. Excellent. Right. Okay, let's move forward. So our next one is a scene. Now, this is one of those ones where you kind of have to almost look twice as to what you're looking at. Because essentially what we have is girl on bike on bridge over canal. And you can tell it's the canal because further up we have the canal boat here and then we realize okay so that's water reflecting 
the sky and the trees. But for a moment, it's almost like you could be underneath looking up at the trees and skies or that it's a bridge over the sky. It's a, there's a lovely kind of almost optical illusion or double way of looking at it where your brain is going, oh, I'm looking at the, oh, no, it's like that kind of duck rabbit sketch where you're never entirely sure which one is it. And your brain does a kind of little kind of back and forth until you finally go, ah, now I know what I'm looking at and it sort of settles a bit. So that's fun. And I think black and white is really quite interesting with, with that as a choice as well. So what Asim said, well, lost, lost the notes there. So, and he actually, yes, actually got his picture in early <laughs> rather than leaving it to the last minute. So smug points for you, Asim. It was a hot and sunny day. Went for a local canal side walk in a local English village called Fenny Compton, accompanied by my new Nikon a D5, D3500. Called for a little test, as it's my first DSLR camera. Whoop, whoop. Whilst on a roadside bridge, I saw a little canal boat approaching from a distance. I thought it would be nice to take a few shots. The canal boat was very slow, so I had to wait a while. But in the meantime, a cyclist decided to walk into my shot and have a break and drink a sip of water, totally unaware of my presence. I frantically waved to her, indicating that I would like to take a picture using the universal sign by pointing at the camera and got a thumbs up. I took a few shots. We spoke afterwards. I showed her the images. And we spoke briefly about my interest in, in, interest in Henri Cartier-Bresson, and I assured her that it would keep... Uh, her identity hidden. Only 20 more miles to go, she said, and off she went, never to be seen again. The reason I chose cyclist on bridge 137, and in fact, actually, you can see, if you zoom in on here, there is bridge 137, is, is one is one of my most liked images on social media, uh, with over 500 likes, and it was also featured on B, by the BBC for my Instagram gallery. Oh, that's a kind of fun one to have. Although the original wasn't technically very good, poor lighting to heavy afternoon sunlight in the wrong position, by converting it into black and white and playing with the light, I found I created a more interesting image with it. The two-in-one dual perspective shot. From one perspective, it gives you the illusion of being on the vertical plane, while on another, it's on a horizontal plane, when you merge the two into the same photo. Always thought it was, it was just, I was just messing around and didn't get the technical bit right, but it seems to have got a lot of publicity. So yeah, I think it, well, it's another one of those examples whereby you've taken the photo, you're kind of excited by something there at the time, you get back, you look on the computer and nothing's quite working as you want. The lighting isn't quite right. And then you set about editing it and the way you've edited it has actually lifted it into something else. Uh, and I think that, you know, it's, it's back to that point we were making earlier. Editing is a hugely important part of photography and it's a part of the story. You are creating, You're either you're making a story or you're, or you're f finding a story in something that you've made earlier. And then when you find it, you then edit it in order to enhance that story. So yeah, great fun shot, that one. Quite illustrative uh, with the black and white. It could almost be like a kind of pen and ink drawing in some ways. So thanks for that one. Uh, right, okay, so let's just minimize that. And we get, okay. This is, a, this is a story image, I really like it. It says April, Nerea says, great shot, Asim. Sandra, interesting photo, Asim. Russ says, I like this photo a lot. You capture a moment of silence. Oh, Ben's asking Inga if there's a particular place you can stand where the ball doesn't form an image of you or where the, or where the image is huge and spread across unnoticeably across the entire diameter of the ball. And Inga just says, guess that, Ben. Right, okay. <laughs> You've got to give us some kind of clue and answer to this, Inga. VG says, brilliant, Asim. I thought it was first to the sky, but it is a canal optical illusion. Maggie says, I really love the black and white for the atmosphere. Rosie says, brilliant shot. Hope you enjoy your new camera. Mandy, black and white is perfect for this shot. Well done. Roy also thinks black and white is the correct choice. Cool, right. So where are we down here? We've got Asim. So Nuria next. So now this, we've got this um, quite amazing abstract lines. We've got curvy lines, circular going around here, but then within this kind of blue marble, we've got lines going in the opposite direction. Yeah, it's quite a quite abstract. Lots, you get lots of like curvy lines going about all over the place. So Nuria says, uh, my best photo challenge. There are a few reasons why that I picked this one. The first is because it came fourth place in photo crowd. Second, I was well chuffed with the result and because it was a very simple idea that literally took me 15 minutes to come up with. She goes on to say, 
All I used was my daughter's toys. A blue marble, a slinky. Ah, so it's a slinky, is it? Right, cool. And a little torch to make it dark enough. Uh, sorry, and a little torch. And to make it dark enough, I had to cover myself with a black fleece just so I could get the effect I was after. But little did I know that I'd end up getting a top 10 positioning, especially when there were so many amazing photos in that category. So yeah, very proud of myself. So yeah, that, yeah that's a lot of fun. That, you know, you have an idea, you just couple of your daughter's toys, you play around, you create something. It hasn't taken you very long, but you've made it. That didn't, it's not, you, I, I'm always, whilst I love beautiful sunsets and captures and everything else, there's something about created photography which I always quite find fascinating. The idea is that photo would not exist. Nobody else took that photo. Nobody else could have taken that photo. It's only there because you made it. It's not like somebody else could have wandered into the same position and taken the same photo. It's unique in that aspect. So yeah, kudos to you there. More smug points, I think, uh, for, for playing around for that. And then it's nice to see that it got recognized in the, in, in the contest as well. So thanks for sharing that one. So where are we? Okay. Um, oh, Inga's put a link in the thing. If you're interested, you can read about the River Harp here on sophiesworld.net forward slash river dash music dash and dash water dash spirits forward slash. So if you are watching this on um, live now, go and check out the comments and Inga's given a link there. We can come back to it in, in a little while. Uh, it will still be here when I finish recording. April says, love the blue. Asim says, thank you very much. And for the smug points, April says, uh, very creative. Congrats on the top 10. Asim loves the idea. Uh, Rebecca says, amazing, very creative. Cliff says, original idea from everyday objects, great imagination. Sandra says, interesting abstract photo. Michelle, clever idea, very unique. VG says, marble colour, the rich blue, you captured it well. Rosie says, very innovative shot, love the blue. And Nuria says, uh, thank you everyone for your kind words. So, cool, right, okay. So next, we'll just say just a couple more photos to go. And we'll wear that time really is getting on. This could well end up being like the longest podcast we've ever done. My apologies to everybody who's getting a sore backside, right? <laughs> sitting, sitting so long. Right, okay, so the next one then is Becca. So this is Becca's shot. And I, there's another one I remember Becca putting in once before. She says, not only is this my best photo, but also my favorite. It was one of the very first I took after getting my DSLR. And I posted it here before for the spring fling challenge, which is something I did back in autumn. Uh, and it received really good results in photo crowd and view bug. Plus it's my baby girl, so I am a tad bias. Happy first anniversary to Understanding Photography with Kim Ayers and thank you all for your critique direction and advice and I remember this photo because you also I I did a I did a four short four day workshop on photography for which Becca took part and the and essentially this was the winning photo of of that the overall winner and it is such a beautiful photo it's such a beautiful photo the it works on so many levels first of all cute kid how can you resist a cute kid but it's not just cute kid. The light is so soft, natural daylight coming through the window, creating these beautiful, soft, creamy shadows. But then the focus of it is you've got the four, it's a, a wide aperture, so it's not a lot in focus. And the foreground, front part of the bed, out of focus, daughter in focus, back part of the bed, out of focus again. So it gives you that layers coming that way. You've got the layers of light and shadow as it moves across. And then you've also got the layers of colors, the pink of the skin, the blue of the dress, the slight bluish tinges then in the white of the sheets. Um, it's very soft, it's very dreamy, it's very creamy. And uh, you know, if you're a parent or an uncle or, or an auntie or whatever, it's, it's, you, you just want to nuzzle the child. It's, <laughs> you can feel the softness of the skin. It's, it's uh, really is a beautiful photo. And I'm really glad you've to, to, to see it again, Becca. So thank you very much for, for putting that one in again. I'm sure I'll find a few positive comments kicking about here. Uh, yep, already we've got... Uh, um, yeah, Ben's going, ah. 
Sandra says, ah, oh, lovely Becca. Amandi, adorable. Maggie says, so beautiful, Becca. April, very cute daughter. VG says, Becca, she looks angelic. Asim says, Becca, this is so cute. Nuria, ah, oh, that's so cute. Inga says, wonderful shot. Cliff says, really lovely picture of your daughter. So, yeah, that's, you know, this is a stunning photo. So, on to the last photo. And this photo wasn't actually put into the... Uh, the Facebook group so if you so none of you have actually seen this one before and it is the first submission by somebody who has been watching these podcasts since the very beginning and it's quite possibly my biggest fan now I know some of you out there think that you might be my biggest fan but I think this this entrant really is because it came from my daughter Meg so my daughter Meg has been she she doesn't watch these live. Um, she watches the recorded version, usually on a Thursday or Wednesday or Thursday. Um, and she sits down with a cup of coffee, a latte, and usually, and um, watches the podcasts. And she took this photo a couple of weeks ago. Um, <laughs> and she asked me if I would put it into tonight's um tonight's podcast uh and meg's comment with it was i have a fantastic dad who is very very good at doing his podcast because he makes me smile a lot and also i am very proud of him so much and that is meg that's my daughter that is so yeah proud dad just like becca proud mum in the last photo um this is my this is my daughter she took this photo on her phone because it's something she loves doing sitting down watching the podcasts with her coffee um, and she's got a really lovely I think it's a medjool date sitting on the saucer with it as well but it's I like obviously I am absolutely biased I but I I, I also love the creativity I love the idea that this is a world you know she sits she's got her place got the table got it set up and that's what she's going to sit and sit and watch the, the podcast and she always gives me lovely feedback on it afterwards so um, yes, I promised Meg that I would include this photo in the podcast as well. So thank you very much for entering that one, Meg. So finally then, uh, last few comments. Uh, we've got Becca saying, thank you for all your lovely comments. Uh, and then Mandy says, brilliant, Meg. Sandra says, lovely. Asim says, nice one, Meg. That surely deserves extra smug points. Absolutely, it does. Lots of smug points to you, Meg. Inga says, great meta capture. <laughs> uh jackie says nice one meg nicholas says oh that's so sweet meg theanne says well done meg maggie says uh she loves her amazing dad yeah she does and it's lovely but michelle says oh how lovely cliff says simply wonderful meg both the photo and the description vg says proud dad and proud daughter the best compliment you could ever get kim meg you rock and it is it's true the best compliment i could possibly hope for so there you go. Oh, Jim says, well done, Meg, as well. We have done a full year of podcasts. And I couldn't have done them without you. Quite literally. I mean, there's, I'm not going to do these if nobody turns up. But I think it's been it's been a really enriching experience for me. And it's lovely. It's lovely getting the positive feedback. I really, you know, I, I greatly appreciate Every compliment that you, you've given, everyone who said that they've got something out of these podcasts, I'm delighted, absolutely delighted. It gives me validation, for sure. I can have my little smug moments. But it, it is more about validation. It is about me delighted that you are getting something out of it. I do these podcasts because I love to share. I love to help. I love to feel that something I do makes a difference. And... If you are getting something out of it, if you are finding ways of improving your photography, if you then then it's worth me. It's worth me doing. And the fact you come back each week, the fact that you submit next week, we'll be back to a kind of more normal podcast. So we'll have the critique section. Make sure you put the photos in for critique and we can go through them and we can come up with the ideas of helping to advance your photography and everybody else can join in as well. So thank you thank you for giving me this year of podcasts and 
Thank you for the promise of joining me on the next year as we continue to advance these podcasts. And let's grow our community. Let's have fun. Invite, I was going to say invite your friends, but not just your friends, there's the, your acquaintances, the people you know in your circles who you think might be interested. Forward them a link, forward them a little description. Say, look, there's this going on. You might find it interesting. And let's see what we can do with these podcasts and enjoy how they develop over the next year. Right. OK, so um, Nuria says, beautifully said, Meg, lovely photo. Uh, Roy says, another great podcast. Thanks. Um, Maggie says, it's been a lovely celebration of this year, Kim. Thank you, Maggie. Rosie says, great evening, everyone. Many thanks and everyone. Uh, Jill says, uh, many thanks, Kim. Congratulations. Nuria, good night, everyone. Thank you so much, Kim, for the great way to celebrate the anniversary. Theanne says, I haven't been to your podcast often, but I thank you so much for the year of putting them together. I've enjoyed seeing what the photographers are doing. Looking forward to a second year. Jim says, thanks for a brilliant podcast. Russ says, another fantastic evening and a pleasure to share your anniversary edition with such a with such a welcoming and supportive group of passionate photographers. Yeah, we're such a great group. (laughs) April says, congrats. Michelle says, thank you again for your great advice and first year anniversary. And there's more thanks coming in. So thank you very much. I'll take a look at the last comments as we go, because we're now pushing towards two and a half hours, which is more than I can ask anybody to have to sit through. Besides which, I still have a little bit of cake to finish off. (laughs) So I will see you all next Tuesday. I haven't decided exactly yet what I'm going to discuss first, but we will certainly be having a critique section. So get your photos in that anything you feel that you would like to get feedback on. Uh, photos that you've got sticking points with, perhaps you enjoy them, but other people don't, you're not sure why. There's photos that you kind of, that you know there's something in there, but you can't quite get it working. We've not really done the critique for the last couple of weeks, so it'd be quite fun to get back into that. So get your photos in and uh, see you next Tuesday. So thank you once again, ever so much for, for, for turning up, coming along and supporting. Take care. Bye-bye.